Welcome back to Middle Earth, everybody. Welcome, Arvanauts, to May 8th, 2018. It's about 25 minutes to 1 p.m. Eastern. I hope everyone is doing well, and I hope you folks are looking forward to some adventures in Middle Earth good times as much as I am. I am looking forward to some fun. I hope you folks are as well. And you're looking forward to Wilderland Adventures as we move on to Episode 4, Those Who Tarry No Longer. We're up to Day 21 of this campaign, which is awesome. Really, really been enjoying it, and I hope you guys have been as well. Before we get started, you guys know the way to support the stream. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to follow the channel. Please make sure to support the channel by checking out the YouTube with past broadcasts of the stream. Please subscribe over there as well. Uh, that's exclamation point ArvTube. Uh, exclamation point ArvCord will get you over to my Discord channel where you can hang out with the Arvanauts in between streams. Exclamation point ArvTweets will let you hang out uh, on my Twitter and find out things that I talk about, which is not just so you know, just about, um, you know, role playing. I mean, there is some of that, but there's a lot of my writing, some of my family, a little little bit about politics, a whole bunch of things that's happening over there as well. Um, that is the deal with that. Uh, exclamation point uh, Arv uh, Shop will get you over to my merchandise shop where you can get at the moment Infinity and Beyond merchandise, although soon we are going to be expanding that to Adventures in Middle Earth and uh, Esper Genesis stuff as well, which is going to be really cool. Um, so you can get uh, mugs and bandanas and shirts and hats and hoodies and mouse pads and I don't know dog dishes I have no idea what else but you can get a lot of stuff over there with the logos on them so you can check that out and that of course supports the channel also supporting the channel is exclamation point arvtreon a-r-v-t-r-e-o-n that is the link to my patreon which is kind of the financial backbone of the channel and uh, allows us to do a lot of cool stuff including um, pay my voice actors and do a bunch of other things uh, and also provides you with some cool stuff as well including and if Ashera pops on tonight I, today I need to make sure um, that I uh, take a moment at the end of this uh, stream if I have a chance if I have a chance we'll see um, to be able to read her character background because I did her character background it is finished Genli who I know is in chat is up next for character background I just finished my grading yesterday so hopefully uh, over the next couple of days I will be able to finish Genli's character background and then we'll be able to read that to him so that's what's going to be going on there and then we've got um, after uh, that we've got of course the subscription system which is the button right above the video window. Subbing allows you to use those gold hypes, those Arvany hypes that I saw nonstop using before. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that as well. And um, yeah, we've got stuff going on. Also, I have a uh, announcement which I am going to make related to this particular campaign when I bring the other players in, but I will do that in just a minute. Um, so yes, schedule-wise, we've got Wilderland Adventures, Adventures of Middle Earth going on right now. At 4 p.m. Eastern uh, today, I will be over at GOG with my show Pen and Pixels, where I'll be continuing my stream of Battletech. Next week is going to be D&D uh, &D with GOG Storm King's Thunder, um, but we have got Adventures of Middle Earth here and then Battletech over on GOG. GOG. Then on Friday, I will be back with Esper Genesis, which is my sponsored campaign from Alligator Alley Entertainment. Um, they are uh, sponsoring us, of course, and we're going to have the uh, crew back um, with the... They've escaped the Aos Keldor. Now the question is, what is going to happen to them next? So they're going to be here on Friday. I'm not going to have a game stream on Saturday, but I am going to have a concert stream. So I do want to remind everybody that I'm going to be playing Porch Fest with my band in Somerville, Massachusetts. I am going to stream that if I can. So that'll be from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern uh, on Saturday. So you'll be able to see my band playing, do an acoustic set, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, I actually linked that in Discord, I believe. Uh, actually, no, I think I linked it on my Twitter. So if you go to Twitter, you'll be able to see a link to that, which would be really cool. Um, and then uh, next week, the following week, um, Tuesday, I'll be right back here with uh, some Lone Wolf playthrough with some D&D &D with GOG. And the following weekend, Friday, Saturday, I will not have streams because I'm going to be with uh, Mrs. Arv at her college reunion. Union, um, which is a thing that we're going to be doing, so I'm going to be there. But the week after that, of course, is ARVCON. Cannot emphasize enough how important this is, folks. ARVCON is our convention to support the Damon Running Cancer Research Foundation. I am just about to make an official announcement about that because I've just about got everybody nailed down in terms of players, in terms of concert uh, people, in terms of a lot of stuff. We've got giveaways. We've got a whole bunch of things. We've got our corporate sponsors in the mix. So we've got a lot of people that be supporting us, and that announcement is coming soon, Some time this week. Um, and again, ARFCON will be the last weekend of May. So please make sure that you've got that set up for that um, because uh, that's very important for us and uh, it's important for the world, not just for the channel. It's important for us to be able to help them. So that's what's going on with that. All right. With that said, 
I am going to unmute myself so the folks can hear that we're ready to go. And then I am going to unmute them. Talking about it in the kitchen. And then we're He's going like, to go over no, to them. It's on Wednesdays as well. And I'm like, well, what? What? <laughs> what? what? I always know that when I go over to Trend that it'll always be an interesting uh, conversation we're, that's we're happening. talking about yeah. my, my lovely internet issues. Oh, okay. Is, is it, are they survived? surviving no, at the moment no, no. okay <laughs> got that four times so far oh really oh god yeah it's uh i don't understand i don't know why tuesday in particular is it's the not way that just it tuesday is. that's what i was just talking oh about. it's just everything it was, okay it was doing it yesterday which oh. i normally am not up that early on monday now it's doing it today according to my house but it happens on wednesdays when he's getting ready to go in his his business because he works from home on wednesdays so it happens when he's getting ready to do his thing so apparently it's a morning thing I see. So, well, maybe this is maybe California doesn't like mornings. I mean, that's that's possible. You know, maybe if everything gets started afternoon, I have no idea. Um, but I am uh, nonetheless very pleased to see you here along with the rest of the players uh, and uh, to welcome all of them in. And I'm going to welcome them in. And uh, then I will make an announcement about this very special thing that all of the viewers will be able to take advantage of. Um, and uh, I'll talk about this special thing that comes to us from our sponsor, Cubicle 7, in a minute. But I will start with Trendane, who's right below us and who is bemoaning the state of his Internet. I'm sorry to hear that, Trend, but I am happy to hear that you are uh, see that you are back with us um, in now. your inimitable role for the moment that's right how has life been other than internet uh things for you um well uh a druid that i usually am i have been trying to start several fruits and vegetables from seeds and they've actually been working normally <laughs> normally they get about yay tall and then they damp off they go eh. and i just wake up in the morning and they're all laying out flat I'm like what did i do wrong what happened between yesterday when they were thriving and this morning they're all eh and dead and i don't understand um this time it doesn't seem to be happening which is cool so i've got some tomato seedlings that are about that tall and i really need to get into the ground really badly because mm -hmm. they're way too big for the thing the seed starter kits anymore and um we've got some some uh thai ghost peppers that we've started that are, that are about yay tall right now i've got a, an apple seed that just popped up out of the thing i went to the garden store and uh, they had one little thing of strawberries that you know was just starting to vine out right and that looked like it had not been horribly mis uh, misused um all the greenery was rather healthy but when i picked it up i'm like that's very light this hasn't been watered in a day or two uh, so it's like I'm, I'm saving you from this place and i took it home it's sitting in the windowsill right now <laughs> nice got to put that in the ground too so awesome i i um am going to be interested to uh i'll be interested to see whether it works i happen to like strawberries quite a bit so uh, I do strawberries and blueberries are where it's at for me it's all it's all raspberries, about raspberries raspberries are objectively the best berry you and my son Some would agree my, my son inhales raspberries i the problem with raspberries is that the seeds always seem like i don't know they always seem oh. too crunchy blueberries they just they're juicy and they got the it's all got it all going on but anyway my son would agree with you uh there he is a big fan um trend who are you playing today in this spectacular adventure i am playing the um the big guy uh bayorn from now on i've decided i'm just gonna play bayorn. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe not i have some bad news for you <laughs> you, <laughs> are, you are in error <laughs> No, I'm playing Tawny Bear, which is practically the Bay Orange. Oh, sure. Al almost identical. Virtually <laughs> His stats are all almost uh, the same. Yes. Just, you know, they're all like 40. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, Tawny Bear, the Hearthminder, who is now a master healer and is going to be even less fighty than he was before. Much, <laughs> to, much to Inga's delight, I'm sure. Yes, and uh, speaking of that, um, I should say that these folks have all leveled up to level three, and so there are a lot of things that happen at level three, including uh, archetype uh, choices, and so I'll, I definitely will ask them for those as we move along here. So, see you, Orb Weaver. Um, so, uh, pleasure to have Trent back with us, as always. Moving right on down the line, we have Will from Encounter Roleplay, hardest working man in D&D &D show business, as they say. Um, good to see you, Will. Uh, and how is life with you? How is, how is, the, yeah. how is the shows, the six million yeah. shows? Yeah, life is really good. Um, we just finished our uh, like our studio setup, so we've got the the free PCs to run all our shows, and that's over in the Netherlands. And we've got our full time engineers, so it's like ten hours of work a week, which I no longer have to do. So I'm 
a lot more well rested and uh, relaxed than I normally am. So I'm really, really glad that solution came through. That's awesome. Uh, we've been working on it for a long, long, long time and spending lots of money to make it all happen. But now that it's done, I can finally breathe and relax. And I just turn up to shows now and it's, it's great. I just click a button or two and then everything just works. So I'm really happy uh, and a little bit more relaxed. So I'm well. Um, and yeah, the season's going great and uh, lots of lots of positive fun things happening. Out there. And we're heading over to Canada in like a month's time. So we're uh, booking our uh, little apartment over there. So uh, yeah. Where, we're, where in Canada? We're going to be in Toronto, yeah, for six months. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh, Toronto. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's practically the United States. Jeez. Uh, last, year, last year we were in Montreal, uh, but yeah, we're gonna go back to Toronto this time. So we never know. We might go up to Ottawa. We we went through it last time we were there. So who knows? It would be really nice. We should yeah, hang out awesome. if you come to Ottawa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, lots of lots of positive things happening. It's really sunny in England. So uh, yeah, I'm in a good mood. But um, also, I leveled up. Like everything is rosy. <laughs> <It's like> a, <laughs> I've also gained levels. It's just like. <laughs> woo! <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for Robar, on the other hand, despite having gained a level, he's probably his usual grumpy self. But um, yeah, no, uh, I'll be playing Robar Staunton, who is now a Hunter of Shadows wanderer, uh, which means that he goes and jumps at his own shadow occasionally. Yes, he hunts uh, his own shadow. Uh, <laughs> in, in, pra in practice, he is... Like <laughs> right he's so he has proficiency in the shadow lore skill but also uh he is now considered a foe of the enemy before he was kind of maybe like a frenemy like or you know he'd hang out with him but now he's an actual foe of the enemy so right. yeah. yep. hi peter pan <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but it's it is uh, good to have will back with us i am i am looking forward to uh seeing what happens with the bar next because actually this fellowship phase will be a fairly important one for him so oh, we will yeah. talk about that in a little bit moving right along down the line we have of course terry who is now for those of you who hi. were wondering uh, you know, like terry seemed to have dropped off the grid for a while but she's here she's <laughs> fine everything's okay terry's here welcome hi. back uh welcome back terry how's how's life and everything hi yeah, I kind of forgot to let anybody know that I was like leaving the country for a week. <laughs> so uh, it's okay. Nobody yeah. panicked much. <laughs> Nobody panicked. No, uh, no, I was um, like uh, after my birthday, I went to my boyfriend's place in the Netherlands. So like, I could like spend time at his place, and it was kind of busy. So like, not much time on the internet, like barely any. Um, but <laughs> and he just like posted in the chat apparently. <laughs> Well, hi. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is um, your fault. I see how yes, it is. Yes, it's his fault. Like, uh, is only but are there any mods here about, uh, except for me that can like ban him or somebody? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, so that's what I have been up to lately. Um, but yeah, uh, I am playing Inge, daughter of Ida. She is a dwarf mason from uh, the Erebor. And um, now at level three, um, she also got to choose an archetype. However, the core rules for uh, Adventures in Middle Earth were not sufficient on that end because, like, none of the archetypes listed in there fit her character. So instead, uh, with some talking with the guys, we found another one to use for her, and that is um, the roguish scout archetype, specifically the skirmisher from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Ooh. have to see uh, where that is going to go balance wise and stuff uh, but yeah we have hopefully stuff will work out but otherwise that seems to fit the bill very nicely so far so yeah um, basically means that she becomes more combat heavy because i figured that like kind of fits things pretty well given mm. how the, the route she has taken so far and like somebody in this party needs to do the fighting right <laughs> <laughs> hey now <laughs> So yes, uh, it, the, the ladies are the ones who are still alive <laughs> at the end of the. Last I get, part. yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to note, by the way, that uh, you know, so obviously the river has been doing some of this, but you know, Will's kind of like, listen, just because I haven't hit some of these things does not mean I have not been making an attempt to fight <laughs> in all these cases. <laughs> like, maybe he, get a maybe he's star for like an, uh, like an well, effort was made. He I'm admires sure. Tani's pacifism, and you know. <laughs> Like, I wish I could be as strong as him. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I need. I have the strength to not fire when when That's needed. Right. So, 
Um, no, that actually, uh, the truth is that Robar has actually had some good roles at different moments, just not at moments that he's sometimes wanted them to be, <laughs> like yeah. the moment. So, well, I also, I also forgot that I had a thing at level two which allowed me to do extra damage with my ranged attacks. So even the ones I have been doing haven't been quite as effective as they should have been. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. But now we'll all see. One of the yeah. things I like about the level three archetype system actually is that that you were just saying yourself, Terry, when you get to that level, you actually have a better understanding of how the campaign is shaping up and your role within it. And so that, you know, then gives you a chance to further spe specialize. Yeah. So, um, but yes, I am looking clever forward there. to seeing how, how Inga uh, performs here um, as Inga hangs out with her best bud, Robar, um, as they are heading up to find out more about things with Robar, etc. Does that mean that Robar just like at one point pulled out an arrow and realized that he hadn't been putting the arrowheads on the yeah. end? Of the He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to, not the rubber tip ones. Those are for practice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was test using uh, the foam arrows that they use for LARPing right exactly yeah. like, shouldn't be using nerf uh, yeah exactly um, alright well I'm looking forward to uh, quite a bit more from uh, from Terry and from Inga um, and last but certainly not least of course is Amal who is surfaced above dissertation work um, for long enough to join us to play because um, then even on his hiatus how, how is all that going Amal are you feeling how's, how's your school stuff going are you it's feeling okay okay there's a lot of uh there's it's always like there's a kind of layer of rust to kind of get through before you can start really getting back at the the meat of the, the thing so i think i'm there now i'm actually in it and it's it's okay um it is however extremely relaxing to not be on twitter uh except for when my beloved husband who is still on twitter sees fit to just randomly narrate stuff to me from it and uh, it's it's a it's a balancing act, mind you. He yesterday spent like the entire day. We were trying. We were. I was at PenguinCon this weekend, which was great fun, um, and uh, really enjoyed meeting new people and stuff. Uh, and it was it was quite intense. Stayed up very late several nights in a row. So uh, then we were traveling back all day yesterday, and he was like randomly telling me like derailed tweets and nonsense and such things and completely failed to tell me that there were new episodes of Steven Universe. So <laughs> like I managed to get to the end of like 10 p.m. yesterday, a friend just starts maniacally texting me going, oh my God, you have it to the Steven Universe. I was like, what, what? And Stu said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I saw something on Twitter about that. And I was like, you monster. <laughs> um, this is what I wanted so to hear. This is the premium content that you're supposed to actually tell me about when I am not there. Anyway, uh, so all this to say, I have in fact watched the most recent episodes of Steven Universe. Holy shit. <laughs> and stuff and revelations. Um, yeah. Have so you anyway. been watching the same episodes because I've been kind of disappointed? I am. <laughs> I am. I have many feelings. I have many feelings. Some this is the time and the place. Let's talk about it. Yes. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. It's major spoilers. Like major, major spoilers. Yeah. No. No. Let's not talk about spoilers. Yeah. But like... I. I. Uh, I. I think I get your feelings of disappointment because I really want to see them pull this back. Like what? So yeah. Just like been trying to find out. Wait, which was the last episode I watched? Uh, I don't know. Was it? Doesn't it... matter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like last Nobody week, cares. I watched some episodes. Oh no, there there were two new ones yesterday. Oh okay, I've not seen that. Those okay. Ones. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, no. You yeah. Prepare yourself. Okay. I I shall. I will. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I like how spoiler free <laughs> reviews of this mostly involves. Oh my god. No. I just. Oh, can I? Like no. Like no sentences are completed during spoiler free reviews of things. I, I take spoilers so seriously, especially where Steven Universe is concerned. And it. Anyway. Yeah. Hello. This is oh. the. I, I, oh, never mind. Yeah. It's, no, I'm, he's not available right now. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. I, I really. <laughs> can I just have you record that voice? Like no. <laughs> Get out. Um, no. You want to get people to stop calling you? Just answer, recording. Ah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's like, click. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're like, they stop calling. Yeah, I should probably do something like that. Anyway. Um, yeah. I'll and they can't it. say that you didn't tell them you were recording. So. It, that's true. That's true. It's true. So I am playing uh, the River, who is a woodsman of Rosgobel, and she is also a warden who is, uh, what is the term, an the warden expression that she has chosen is that of Harold, 
which means she will be an even fightier bard than previously. Uh, and yes. And we'll be able to uh, help her companions um, as well yeah. with that, like her songs of slaying. Songs I like of that, slaying. I like that idea. I'm going to see, I, I really am curious if it's just going to be some of like uh, Terry's death metal, you know, just kind of like, like you know, slay, 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 you know, the slayer. song of slaying. Yeah, gonna... This is prog metal, if I may, not death metal. Not, I beg your pardon, <laughs> well, yeah, prog metal. Did you not consult the map? Yeah. Prog metal is just death metal with actual musicians. Hey, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm totally joking. I'm joking. Not so far. No, I'm, no, ju no. I'm just kidding. Death metal musicians are musicians wow. too. I know that. Um, but this guy also has a death metal band who made this one. So I know you could. The, the response to that is always death metal is prog metal without the pretentiousness. So that's oh. that's the other way to do that. So <laughs> that's how you reverse it. Anyway, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm. Just learn a bunch of like topical jokes just to like make them around me now, like <laughs> last time. <laughs> <laughs> after me like telling you like subgenres and now you just like have like a list i got to yeah oh no i have to be able to I have to be able to take that it's true um but uh anyway i am looking forward to seeing how uh, the river songs of slaying and heraldry uh is represented here it's going to be fun times uh let me make uh two quick announcements here that i wanted to wait for the players to make and then they're going to roll hit points for you on stream and then we're going to get into the fellowship phase so two announcements are first of all um arfcon as i said is coming up the last weekend of may it it is Memorial Day weekend in the States, and these folks will be here to start it off on Friday, uh, May 25th. These folks will be back here for a special Friday session of Adventures in Middle-Earth Wilderland Adventures. They will be, I believe, kicking off uh, the ARFCON, so this will be a chance for you folks who love all things Tolkien to show um, that not all those who wander are lost, and that uh, indeed there are people that can get more money for cancer research starting there. It is an important, uh, probably one of the most important things that we we do all year on this channel. We are trying to break $3,000 this year. We have raised almost $4,000 in the last three years combined. And so uh, this is personally important to me. As I've mentioned before, I lost my mother to breast cancer nine years ago. I've lost several uh, dogs and had other family members and friends affected by it. And this is not an unusual circumstance. And when I started this some years ago, uh, I decided that instead of just being angry and helpless about it, I wanted to do something about it. And this is one of the things that we do. Um, this will be an opportunity with um, my favorite universe, my favorite author and uh, among my favorite group of people um, that gets to actually play this together. So uh, we are going to bring the community together as we have done in the past. And so please mark your calendars for that. There are going to be giveaways. We have corporate sponsors. I'm going to be making announcements about all that. We've got a concert coming up on Saturday night. We have a special event and all of my campaigns, Esper Genesis, AME, D&D with GOG and Infinity and Beyond with their concluding of the Rise of Tiamat, a marathon conclusion on that Sunday, will all be playing for you that weekend. So we got a lot of stuff going on. So please mark your calendars for that. So that's ARVCON announcement number one. That's why you will not see. Yep, trend representing the infinity and beyond. Uh, I love it. Um, that is going to be happening uh, again over the weekend. So you will on the weekend of the 25th, 26th, 27th. So you will not see these folks again after today until then. And that's why they will be back for their second session. Second announcement is I want to thank our sponsors, Cubicle 7, um, because um, I have a code for you people. We are announcing today a discount to code, which is exclusive for this channel. Uh, the code is, although now that I think of it, I'm going to, people are going to see this and everyone in the VOD will go run for it. It doesn't matter if they're using the code, they found it through this channel. So that's what matters. It is a code which has been designed for us. If you use the code twitch2018, twitch2018, if you use that code at checkout in Cubicle 7 store, you will get 10% off anything that you get from them. So you will get 10% off any of the books, any of their stuff. And not just, by the way, adventure of Middle Earth, Warhammer, which I know is near and dear to uh, Will's heart. I'm gonna um, spend 120 dollars, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> like um, stuff like that. Um, Doctor Who, um, all of the stuff that they do over there. Cubicle Seven is a great company, and they have given us a discount code. So again, Twitch 2018 is the special code that you can use. This is good through October, by the way. So I want to thank uh, Cubicle Seven for being kind enough to do this and uh, be our official sponsors this way. So very exciting. Twitch 2018, 10% discount code. Go use it frequently and tell them who sent you because all that's good um so thank you to cubicle seven and thank you to the players with that said i'm going to get the music started here and uh, let's talk a little bit about this fellowship phase um the uh, players have just completed episode three where they would manage to resolve the problems of oderic 
and Brunhild and um, save the Bjornings in the process. And they are now at Bjorn's house. And I want to set up for the chat a little bit about um, the circumstances here. They are at Bjorn's house and um, they're... Oh, wait. Before I do that, I'm sorry. I wanted you guys to roll hit points. I take that back. Yeah. Um, so we're going to roll hit points. Yes, I know the windows are messed up. Trendane's internet is a problem, as we've already heard. So bear with me. We'll get it back. But in the meantime, let's start with, I guess, it doesn't really matter. But let's start with Terry. Go ahead and roll your hit points for me, please. Yes. And wait, don't do it yet. Let me pull up the dice roller. Yeah, um, I was going to say it. So are we rolling uh, from within our sheets, or are we rolling... In roll 20, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, yes, using your sheets, yep. Um, let me just pull up my di the dice roller, though. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Not Wait, that. rolling our sh from our sheets, how does, work? does that work? There we go, I'll give you just a second. Oh, uh, huh? You can click on uh, hit dice, and that will oh. roll. Oh, that's handy. Okay. So we... Uh, are we rolling two hit dice or three hit dice? And we're level three now. Right. Um, so you are going to be rolling. You don't roll a no. You don't roll three hit dice. You're going to roll one of your hit dice, um, but you're going to be adding your Constitution bonus uh, to it, whatever if you have one. Where is the hit dice button? Oh, down there. Okay, I saw. Okay, uh, okay can I go? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Again, I know the cameras are mixed up. Chat, hang in there. Wow, look at that. All right, so eight, and did you, was that counting the com bonus? Yes, okay. plus one. So eight, very nice. So that means so you're now, now at 28. 28 out of 28. All Amazing. Right. Good stuff. Uh, I'm so sorry Wait. to be so dense about this. I, I just don't understand what just happened in terms of the sheet. Because how do I roll just one hit die? Uh, there should be on the sheet. Let me go over to it quickly. I'm basically looking, um, there's like, under armor class, there's current hit points, temporary hit points, and there's hit dice. Right. Um, is that where? Because yes, that. yes, that's right. But I think if you roll, let me just make sure. Actually, I think that just rolls the one. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. That I just, I that. just rolled that. That would have been if I had been rolling for you. Hit dice. That all that number means is the number that you were able to use for healing oh. over the course of the day. That's I all that means. It's not going to actually roll three for you. Okay, and um, and does it add the constitution yes. bonus automatically? Yes, it, it actually just did for me. It just did when I right. rolled it for you. It added plus awesome. two, which is your combo bonus. So, but I'll I'll let you roll it rather than me. Awesome. So right. go ahead and do it. I'll since you're well since oh. we're talking about you, we'll have you do it next. Then Mel. Okay. See, better than I did. Hey. All right, a seven. That was pretty good. All right, All right. so. Twenty-two, I think. Uh, yes, twenty-two. Uh, twenty-two out of twenty-two. Lovely. Uh, all right. Uh, then let's have Robar. Uh, I rolled before. Um, oh, did you? I, okay. Yeah, What'd you get? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember, but I have thirty-one hit points. How many did I have last time? Uh, you rolled. Me. You had twenty. Did you roll? You rolled an. Did you have one d twelve? Yeah, I, rolled, I must have rolled a ten and then rolled a and then plus one. Okay. Well, then I won't yeah. make you to give that up. All right. So thirty one. All right. So now we're just waiting for Tani to return, and I assume right now he is um, beating the crap out of his cable provider. Is my guess. Yeah. Um, so we will uh, wait for him to return to roll his hit points. In the meantime, though. I will uh, describe what is happening to the fine people. So we got 28 out of 20 for Inga, 22 out of 22 for the river, and uh, 31 out of 31 for Robar. And as a quick note, Stone, the loyal companion uh, of the river, is actually 12 out of 12 hit points. Um, Lilimon does not actually, has not been sort of delimited in terms of hit points, uh, but just remains the faithful companion. We might need to talk about that at some point, Terry. Even though Lilliman doesn't fight, it might be helpful for him to have hit points at some point. No, he uh, doesn't need hit points because he's never gonna die. That's yeah, well, true. see, so here's the thing. <laughs> no one is ever going to hurt no Lilliman. No, they're so nice. I mean, le you know, listen, Stone Stone took it on the chin a couple times yeah, in this last Yeah, because Stone fight. is fighty and seeks it out and stuff, but, like, Stone will absolutely interpose himself between any Lilamon and any harm attempting to be done to Lilamon. Cutscene, a thousand miles away at the top of the tower, <laughs> an evil creature is like, someday their weakness will be exploited. No. <laughs> um, um, one quick question. Sure. Uh, hit points don't affect armor class or anything, No, right? like they do not. 
Okay. They do not. Nope. Um, but uh, yeah, armor class will be affected. Now, the way to benefit armor class is either to become proficient in particular kinds of armor, which you can then wear to improve your armor class, or when you get to level four, you could choose to improve your dexterity, which would um, drop your armor class that way. So right. there's a couple ways to do that. Um, so, all right, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. So, uh, episode three is over, but before episode four, which is called "Those Who Tarry No Longer Begin," we have a fellowship phase to consider, and there are a few parts to this. Robar and Inga's plan was to go um, to, I believe it was the Easterly Inn, uh, to find out about uh, his family and to gather information about some notes that he originally had tracked down in a small hut, which has been erected on his uh, the ancestral home of his family. Um, this was apparently actively being constructed. There was boxes of construction material and stuff like that, but there was nobody in that uh, hut when he actually was there. He and Inga were there. And so because of that, um, he's decided that he's going to try to figure out something different um, and uh, try to gather information. And so what he's going to do is try to find out more about his family by checking out the inn and sort of seeing where that leads him. So we'll be talking a little bit about that today. Tawny Bear, who we will know as soon as he gets back here, um, is going to be attempting to um, make Bjorn his patron. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the conversation that he has with Bjorn sort of associated with that. And lastly, the river is going to be opening a sanctuary and making Bjorn's house a second sanctuary. Right now they only have one, and that's Lake Town. So opening up a second um, place on this side of Mirkwood is pretty helpful. Um, and so that's what they're thinking about doing because, as the party discovered in the last adventure, it sucks when you can't long rest anywhere. And um, they were not able to long rest anywhere, and they were exhausted and tired, and they survived it, but they were like, oh my god no so more sanctuaries are a good thing you weren't um, even able to short rest anywhere that's true that's true you had a hard time even short resting because of the nature of the adventure that's true yeah. um, but either way having a sanctuary would have some kind would have helped uh, regardless and so these folks will have a chance to do that as well so I think I'm going to start actually um, with uh, since Tawny Bear uh, is currently not with us I'm going to start with Robar and Inga uh, and then we'll come back uh, River to you and um, to Tawny when he gets back with us so um, Robar and Inga, you guys are going to set out. Now, I've put us back on the main Wilderland Adventures map. Um, so you folks are here over at Bjorn's house. So the question really is how you want to set out uh, in this fellowship phase. Like, basically tell me exactly. You're going to the Easterly Inn, but what specifically are you going to try to find at the Easterly Inn? And then uh, sort of lay out for me what you want to do. Because this fellowship phase will take about three months-ish or so, um, is my guess. So... So, to remind myself and everyone else of what note I found there, I wrote it down. So, I had a frantic note um, addressed to me at that place, which said, Dear Robar, I don't know if you'll discover this letter in time. I hope you have come to find what I've sent you the message about. There's rapid writing uh, about rebuilding the ancestral family home. There's been raids from orcs and that they are coming. And so we set about there, and we left a note there and said, meet us at the Eastley Inn at some point soon, you know. Uh, so we are hoping to find whoever wrote that ne uh, letter, whoever left the note for me, yep. and to learn more. Yep. Um, also, as an update, like last time, we've actually been to, like, the ruins of Robar's home. Uh, we did leave a letter there to, like... Right. Whoever sent this and we're like, hey, meet us at this and that time at the Easterly Inn to right. be there. And the time has come. So this is where we are going, hoping that somebody found that letter. Yes. Um, and also so you can hang out with uh, with your boy Dindy. Um, oh, yeah. who, who I know and is... his brother. <laughs> uh, do they like cancel each other out? Please, like, please tell me they do. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's a good point because, I mean, you know, you guys really liked Indy, and and so uh, for Dodie, he's didn't Dinga punch him know. at some point? Uh, I don't remember punching, um, but I remember slapped you being him. very. You might have slapped him. Yeah, I think that's possible. Yeah. Um, you were not very pleased with uh, with Dodie. <laughs> no. um, but so, all right, so you guys are going to be heading up there. So, um, as we have you set off, I guess I'm going to have to seems to be taking longer than I had expected. So I'm going to recapture the windows because the way this works is the minute I do that, he will come back. So um, ah. mm. so I'm going to do that quickly. So bear with me for just a moment whilst is I do Is it a good time that. for me to run to the bathroom? Yes, go ahead and do that. Great. Um, okay. All right, 
And I go. live! There's this, and there's R, and there is this, and there is the river, which is right now a file cabinet, and um, which is hers. This one, good. Okay, and Tani's not with us, but he will be. Good, lovely. All right, let's get to it. So, um, you folks um, set off along your way. Um, are you heading, as you can see on this map, what sort of path are you tracing for yourselves? Do you want to go direct sort of to the easterly inn? Are you going to try to hug the river, hug the wood line? Which direction? Inga uh, always goes for hugging the river. Ta -ta. <laughs> uh, before we leave, uh, I, uh, Robot wants to go straight there, I think. He probably just want to cut a straight path towards the um, Eastly Inn so okay. that he can get some answers. Okay. It's up to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I mean, it's not that far, right? It's like, how far? Uh, it's, well, it's not. I mean, it's probably, since you're going to be going at an actual normal pace this time around, you're probably talking that. Now, obviously, that's, it's only several <laughs> feet. Um, <laughs> It probably is, we're looking at, my guess would be about four to five days travel. Um, again, because you're not going the speed that you did before. Um, you're going at a normal pace. So I would say, yeah, we're probably talking about four or five days, which, by the way, should put you there sometime in, right around now, actually, right about mid-May, um, I would say. Um, so uh, you guys set off along your way to do that. <clears throat> And um, the trip passes fairly uneventfully for the first couple of days. Um, right around here, I guess I would say, um, when you are, and you guys can move your tokens up there, um, your uh, campfire, uh, and your campfire at night, um, it is uh, gotten to be, spring has finally, it took a while, but spring has finally arrived. Um, the cold has sort of given way to the early kind of, echoings of summer and you're sitting around this campfire in the evening sort of chatting each other uh, chatting chatting each other chatting each other is what you're doing you're literally chatting each other chatting with each other um when um in the distance um you hear kind of a strange sound and i would like both of you to make perception checks for me please uh to see if you know what that sound actually is do we get the God, what was it? Nature, natural watchfulness for like bonus, double perception in the wilderness. Yes. So yes, you that, do. We said that was like the bonus is doubled, right? Yes, so correct. So you get okay. Plus four to, on proficiency rather than plus two. Yeah. So fourteen for me. Okay. Okay, so we got a twenty-three and we got a thirteen. Okay. Um, so, make sure I got the right spot that I'm looking at. Uh, guess with this. Okay, sorry, bear with me. Uh, I was like, I got this spot lost, and then I promptly lost the bookmark as soon as I pulled this up, right? Um, okay. So, uh, the, um, thing that I want to note, so you folks are right to the here. So, Robar... You hear, Inga, you do not. You hear sort of the general sound of um, sound of the birds. You hear the occasional call overhead. Um, fairly standard, normal, so to speak. Um, also, my windows are messed up again, which I hope means that Terry, that uh, Trent has joined us. Yes. It does mean that. Yes. Hooray. Outstanding. Okay. Uh, okay, just give me one second. That's one of those ones where I look over. I'm like, why is everybody cut off? And I'm like, that's, that's why. Um, okay. So, uh, you do not hear this, but Robar, um, you hear coming off from the east and fairly far off in the distance, you would say, what sounds like an unearthly singing. Um, and it sounds like many voices, uh, kind of like, um, just snatches. Sounds very familiar to you as well, mm -hmm. um, as if yeah, you've yeah. heard uh, this kind of thing before. Does it remind me of when we were in uh, the Mirkwood and yes. there were those band of elves? Okay. Yes, it does. 
I uh But it's but there's it's not but it's first of all, you're good still probably about a day's travel from Merkwood. Uh and it's louder. I mean it's, there's a lot more of them making this singing. Yeah, I'll um say to Inga Inga, that that sounds like the elves. And the ones that we heard in Merkwood. What does the, <laughs> the singing, you hear that singing? Does she now? Nope. Well, I, hear. I don't hear anything. You must be he must be hearing ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope not. No, that's there's definitely singing out there. It's in the distance, but I can just about make it out. Sounds like those elves from Mudford. I wonder if it's the same band. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, I knew their early work. Like you probably yeah. haven't heard of them. This is before their sellout period. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're, they're I've really got their B-sides. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. All of a sudden, you realize it's actually the trance version. I'm so sorry. It was just like, yeah, the same band as last time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Inga. Yeah, it's okay. 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 Yeah, Almost as if it's in distance, coming closer to you and then exiting again. Huh. I know you can't hear this, uh, Inga, but it's weird. It's like they're getting closer and farther away at the same time. Yeah, it's weird, all right. <laughs> uh, so, what do you want to do about those voices? Uh, I think it's best we leave the elves to themselves. As we did before. Probably. I'll keep an eye out. You do that. Okay. Um, so um, the other uh, rest of the night, though, passes uneventfully, and eventually the music dies away. Rabar, you may remember that when you had had this experience the last time, uh, that you were sort of made uncomfortable by it um it, it sort of yeah. played into your doubts you don't really get that same sense now but there is as is often the case with elvish singing this sense of wistfulness of um nostalgia of fading loss uh and some of that is here but again it's it's not it's not grief-stricken horror you know it's it's more um singing of times gone by um sort of melancholic if anything um, the next morning dawns and um, dawns very beautifully, um, but I would like both of you, again, as you are packing up the campfire to get moving, I'd like you to make uh, another perception check for me. Yes, you can do the same thing with the natural, etc. Um, Twelve. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. So Inga, as you're packing up, kind of like uh, wondering what the heck all this sort of thing was about, um, you do not see <laughs> what Robara sees, and that is um, to the north of your campsite, something glitters, Robar, in the tall grasses nearby. Oh, like a uh, something metal? Not ne not clear. Um, not necessarily metal. Um, something. Well, you're not going to know until you get up on top of it, probably. But it seems to be glinting in multiple directions, though. Sparkling would be a better way to put it. Huh. There's something out there, Inga. Something sparkling. Sparkling? Now that he points it out, Inga, you can see it. Huh. Uh, how far away is it? It's, uh, like, 50 feet. <laughs> it's cl it's really close. Oh, well, let, let's go check it out. Okay. Um, when you get over to the site, you can see the sparkling, and actually as the sun, the rays of the sun beam down, it's almost blinding, um, you see this beautiful stone, um, some kind of like, you might almost describe it as a gemstone, except that it's not carved in any way, it's just smooth, My and there is this, <laughs> yes, there is glinting, uh, there is sort of glinting light coming from within it, um, and uh, it's basically a stone that looks to be white and clear. The light that sparkles from it is white. Um, but 
definitely you would have seen this when you set up camp. Granted, you were setting up camp in the fading light, but you would have seen it, you think, if it were here the night before? Um, Does it look like moonlight caught in a net? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay. it, it does not. I was getting worried for a second. Yeah, second. exactly, exactly. No, it does not. Um, but, Someone um, is dropping the Arkenstone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm loving um, my Arkenstone. <laughs> and your hand just closes around it without even thinking about it. Now I am a burglar. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it is not the Arkenstone. Um, but, uh, but it is beautiful, Inga. It's smaller. Um, you don't pick necessarily up. think, though, as you pick it up, it's, um, it doesn't look to you to be dwarvish in manufacturer. Um, for one thing, it looks more... Um, as if it has been sort of almost sort of it, it has been smoothed and refined and worked but this tends to be the work of elves not dwarves um, it's a cabochon it's a, oh. a cabochon when it's like a smooth rounded you know what that's a word I did not know now I've got, I've got a new word in. A, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you with, with facts about jewelry making but you make <laughs> cabochon by tumbling uh, by tumbling them all together and they kind of polish each other and round each other up yes that's actually um, exactly what it is. And it's funny you say that because yeah. my grandfather used to do this, but I didn't know that that's what it was called. Um, well, then, cool. <laughs> We've all learned something today. Um, so, yes, then a cabochon, I think, is the way to describe it because it does it is um, smooth, but it looks as if it's been done in a more uh, kind of organic fashion as opposed to having one stone shaped by the dwarves. Um, it seems also to be heavier than you would be guess based on its size, Inga. Um it has kind of a weight to it. Um, and as I say, it, it sparkles so that it's almost hard to look at. Can I, like, identify what type of mineral this is or whatever? Um, you could try. Um, like, I mean, she's, like, obviously not a jam cutter, but, like, she must have seen little bits. Yep. Stuff like, right? Well, one thing you can say for sure is that, if anything, this is a stone which would not have come from the heart of a mountain anytime recently anyway. But this does remind you of some stones, Inga, that you might have seen. Not this particular one, but that you might have seen if you had ever had the chance to look into rivers and streams. Not places that you spend a whole lot of time, obviously, as we've talked about your not particular desire for swimming, per se. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, destroys armor, uh, destroys the natural destroys armor. armor and does bad things, exactly. <laughs> but um, it's the kind of thing that you would have seen, perhaps, on the sort of the the bed of uh, the riverbed um mm. you know if you were able to see it through there um so it basically looks like a pebble it so yeah it's a little bigger than pebble. a little bigger than that but yes um and clear so that you can see this sort of glowing from within it um robar uh as you were looking at it and as i mentioned it's i said that it was sort of blinding um you have this flash of memory about remembering uh something from your past where uh, you were shown a beautiful gem, not like this, but a beautiful gem or stone or rock that glinted and glowed. Um, and you remember, the reason this is triggering your memory is because you remember it was so bright that you couldn't really look at it. It kind of left, as you closed your eyes, like looking at the sun for a moment, it left these little marks sort of that, that you kind of took a while to fade, you know, as your eyelids closed. And that was sort of what this reminds you of as well. Um, it may just be coincidence, but it is reminding you of the time uh, when you were with your family, when you were young, when things were better, when your family had its title and you had your your name and respect and reputation. Um, this reminds you of when you were little, seeing that stone. That's... That's the strangest thing, Inga. This stone... It reminds me of something. I've got a memory of a stone not unlike that but from years and years ago when back when my family had not fallen from power I, I don't know why but I recognize it mm. could this just be a coincidence weird. I guess it could be so I personally have the feeling that like whoever like sent us sent you the note originally that they might be really close and we should really keep an eye out. Like you this. Think? I don't know. This just 
is weird because like we've not seen this yesterday and like I feel like the stone is shining we should have seen this yesterday but um, yeah hang on to this and like keep an eye out for anything else that like oh, well. feels like uh, it might connect to whatever is going on here strange last night the elves and then this stone I can't what would help the elves it. have to do with it I don't know I can't help but feel that they might be connected somehow. Hmm. Anyway. Do your family have any ties to the elves, or...? Not that I know of. In truth, I know very little about them. Odd, really odd. Oh hmm. well, maybe we'll find something else on our way north. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so you folks set back out again. Uh, the remaining couple of days of the journey are uneventful. You don't hear any more elves or singing or encounter any more strange stones. Um, and you find yourself coming to the Easterly Inn, which is right here, um, just about um, just before evening time. So maybe about five o'clock, something like that. Um, or six as the sun, of course it's, you know, now that we're in May, the sun is up for longer, but it's definitely setting at this point. Um, as you enter, the, as you sort of head over the uh, hill and can actually see the easterly end down below, um, there are lights inside that are already, um, you can already see lights from the inside of the building. You hear a lot of noise coming from it. There are a lot of horses around there. Um, apparently there has been some... Uh, some work done on the Easterly Inn. You can see what looks like a small little, um, maybe possibly a stable or something like that, but there's definitely bo war, uh, I can speak, uh, boards, wooden boards and things like that that are standing outside near the building. So it's as if they've been doing some construction. Um, and uh, the inn awaits if you wish to go there. Let's head in. Trying to avoid Dendi. <laughs> so, like um, Inga is just like nervously looking around, hoping that she doesn't spot him. <laughs> it's like, where is he? All right, let's get uh, let's get ourselves some uh, let's get some tavern appropriate stuff. Okay, that's good. But oh, where's yeah. where's that's my good. sound at? I can hear it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so. Um, as uh, you enter, um, the first thing uh, you notice is that the room is packed. Um, there are uh, people, first of all, there are tables in many different places. It's very similar to what you found before. Over in a couple of the corner, you have what looks like a few dwarves um, sitting around. Not familiar to you, Inga, but several dwarves that are uh, sitting around a table drinking. There are several groups of what looks like maybe farmers, uh, human farmers, um, that are standing at the bar. You have another group of uh, cloaked figures that are sitting over by one of the windows. They don't seem to talk much. They just kind of look around occasionally. Um, and then, so to basically everywhere you look, um, there are people. Um, there is one by the fireplace towards the back of the room. There is one table that has what looks like a rather tall uh, figure at it. Again, as I mentioned, cloaked. Um, and uh, just sort of, it has a mug in front of um, either him or her, it's not clear. Two uh, hands are kind of wrapped around the mug, and Robar, as you look at this, actually both you and Inga can tell um, that this is someone who has seen the road. There's um, dirt underneath the fingernails. There is um, sort of, you know, soil and dirt that you can see on the knuckles of the hand. Um, and this is someone who's obviously been you know, traveled quite a bit. The cloak itself is kind of tattered and worn a little bit, but you can't see anything except maybe just the eyes um, that the uh, head seems to be looking down at the mug. Um, and as you're looking around, you don't actually catch sight of uh, Dodie. Um, you do catch sight, however, of Agatha, who is Dodie's wife. And as oh. um, she comes over, she says, Oh, bless me. And if it isn't the, the people that we owe everything to, Robar, Inga, how are you? Good. Hello. Hello. Says it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are doing grand. How, how how are you? 
He says, well, you can see we, we barely have time to think these days, but it's always a good thing. Um, I can't really complain. Uh, since we've had, uh, had a chance to talk to you and since you helped us out back then, well, we've got our supplies coming back in and things have been much more regular-like. And then you hear some people, Earl! And she says, oh, excuse me again. Well, uh, you can just tell, go up to the bar, tell them that I uh, had them uh, give you a couple of drinks and then um, I'll see if I can clear off a table for you. And she goes bustling off. Um, and, what did she uh, say? Say again. He, he looks out of anger. She goes, what did she say? <laughs> Something about free drinks. <laughs> so, uh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> okay. You guys are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you go over there um, to the bar, and you can see that there is um, a uh, another unfamiliar human standing behind uh, the bar, and they sort of looks up at you as you come up to the bar. Hello. Wait, who comes up to the bar? I didn't catch that. As you come up to the bar, because you were walking yeah. to the bar to get these drinks. He's standing behind it. Um, and oh, the he bartender. Has, yeah, the bartender. Okay, he has a leather apron I, on. Yeah, okay. um, you're not familiar with him. This may okay. have been a new hire, basically. Um, and uh, sort of looks up and nods. Yeah. Uh, what was uh, uh, what was Dodie's na wife's name again? Agatha. Agatha. Um, yeah, Agatha sent us uh, something about ale. And he says... Um, to please. Oh, all right then, and um, he reaches below. He pulls out two mugs, and he um, pours this. Uh, takes the mugs and puts. Uh, turns around to the barrel behind him, and as he uh, turns the tap, there is this beautiful, like sort of foaming light liquid um, that comes out. This sort of light. Uh, it's not really clear exactly what it is, but it's definitely not that maybe a pale ale or something like that. Um, but he, uh, pours it in and, um, there's this nice foam on the top. Smells kind of nutty and, uh, you know, smells delicious. And he puts the mugs in front and he says, um, that's some of the best we got. Good vintage this year. Well, thank you then. Okay. <laughs> I think it takes both of them. <laughs> no, just a joke, no. Like, uh, she takes one of them. Okay. Uh, like, the bar. Robar is, like, scouring the room for people that he, you know, thinks might be somewhat suspicious or people that might look like they're expecting someone. Uh, I'd like you to make an insight check for me, please, Robar. All right, I shall. Let's see. Inside. Wait, I need to get something real quickly. I'll be right back. Oh, that's a six. Okay. All right. Um, you definitely, as you look around, Robar... Your experience has taught you that everyone is always suspicious at some point. Um, so as you're looking around, you're yeah. kind of like, that one over there is cloaked, mm -hmm. that one over there is, you know, dwarves. I mean, and then you look at Inga, you're like, well, okay, some dwarves are fine. And, um, you know, but the point is that nothing in particular stands out to you, although you do note that there is the one person by himself or herself. Um, otherwise, everyone is sitting at a table with somebody else. But on the other hand, you certainly spend a bunch of your time alone in the past. So... <laughs> You know, that may not be too much of a surprise. Oh, did you actually bring a beer? Nice, nice, nice. nice. That's oh, what I'm talking so about. Jealous. That's good stuff. Oh, it's just mixed with cola. It's like, oh, not the real stuff. <laughs> I want a beer. You saw nothing. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, man. Hales, mate, how about a side? Yeah. So that's what you see yeah, okay. um, around you, uh, Rubar. Okay, I, I'll say this to uh, Inga as well and say, huh. Everyone around here looks a little bit suspicious to me. <laughs> Inga, if and, you want to look, do you want to do an insight as well, or just look around generally, Inga? Um, well, I mean, she doesn't really know what she's looking for. Okay. Like, uh, just like anything that like sticks out particularly. For example, like the other dwarves, like maybe she's checking out if she can tell okay. the, where they are from or something. Let's have you make an insight check too, then. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. You're getting these rolls out of the way now. Um, no, I mean, you don't see anything in particular that seems unusual to you. You notice that the whole inn seems a lot more lively than the last time you were here. Um, and that's a good sign, obviously, for them. So maybe we're going to do this. Um, you know, maybe you feel to yourself like, well, this, this, obviously things have gone well for the Easterly Inn. Um, but there's nothing in particular that seems to suggest, no one seems to be focusing their attention on you. Um, 
The dwarves themselves uh, seem to be um, more of possibly the farming variety, and you can tell this because of the outfits they're wearing. There's not, you know, there's no pickaxes by their chairs. There's nothing, you know, that would suggest more of kind of a mining stuff. Um, and besides, if they were mining, they'd be kind of a pretty far afield out here, so they might just be sort of the farming variety. Um, but nothing out here seems particularly unusual to you, and you're sort of looking around... Um, and then, uh, so, but that's all you see, basically, uh, you and Ramar. Falling is just like leaning backwards against the bar, just like enjoying her ale. Looking around. Um, still not seeing anybody familiar or something? No. I don't Do think they've come. Do you have any idea who could have sent you the note? All I can think of is maybe some family member or some loyal man to the household who has survived and somehow knows that I'm alive. But you're right, they knew, whoever sent me that letter and knew that I was still alive despite the fact I left years ago, they knew that I'd turn up there as well. Mm. And they also maybe have been following us if they left that stone there certainly wasn't there the night before, I would have seen it. I can't help but feel that maybe they haven't arrived yet, maybe they're yet to arrive, or... Well, we be... should let the bartender know, though, that we are here, or at least that you are here, so, like, in case anybody asks for you, Yeah. Then... Yeah. Yeah, I said, look, barkeep, uh, if anyone comes by asking for a Robar Staunton, don't tell them where I am, just give me a nod. And the bartender says, all right, I'll be glad to do that. And from behind you, you hear, As will I, my dearest friends! I am so pleased to see you at last. It is such a pleasure to have you back here again. I am so grateful and happy. Ha look, everyone, they've arrived, everybody. Everyone, look! And so the entire, like, bar turns around as, you know, now you haven't turned around yet. <laughs> um, I think I didn't, I left my pony unlocked. I need to, like, go <laughs> back pretty quickly. No, no, I've already taken care of that for you, my friends. I have already stabled your beloved Lilla boy. He's right there, the whole thing. And, um, and, uh, as you, do you, I don't know if you turn around yet or not, but, uh, No, like, Inga you? was, like, leaning backwards against That's the what, oh, that's right, you were. So. so, um, looking down, Inga, to your right, which is where this is all coming from, you see the, um, delightful figure of, um, Dodaya. Brandy Buck. Um, and Dodi Brandy Buck sort of waves and says, It is such a pleasure to see both of you. He runs up and furiously shakes your hand, Robar. Um, such a pleasure, such a pleasure. Oh, I hope, but bartender, get these ones ale. Oh, I see you've already got ale. Well, if they paid for it, make sure that they don't pay for it twice. And the, the bartender doesn't say anything. And um, Dodi says, It's so lovely to see all of you. Oh, my goodness, so much to say. You can see that we've been quite busy here, of course. And, uh, well, Dindy's not here, you know. He's off on another one of his supply expeditions. But since you've rescued him, he's been far better than before. We've had no trouble with any issues with him. And, of course, who would expect there to be trouble? It was luck as st strong people as you who are actually defending yourselves. But there's only two of you. What happened to Tawny Bear? Oh, he's not hurt, is he? Because if he is, that would be terrible. Is anyone else sort of joined? Joining you, I know there was another hobbit with you or something like that who joined, and then there was that other one who had a dog or something with her. But never mind. There's much. Just, so this is just like a constant like stream I'm of just, just uh, you know. Gonna take a table. <laughs> okay. So, um, and there is, in fact, a, a table that has now opened up. Um, it looks like Agatha might have done that. And um, as you sort of go over to the table, Agatha says, um, "Yes, um, well, Doty insisted on finding you." <laughs> And she kind of looks at you sheepishly, and he says, Well, of course! These are my dear friends who made this possible in the first place. The Easterly Inn would be nothing without myself, you, my dear, my brother, and, of course, these fantastic adventurers, and, of course, the ones that are not here. I'm curious about where they are. I hope that nothing <laughs> has happened to them. Right, and goes back into this thing. <laughs> So you, uh, so as you sit, so you folks sit down at the table, and he says, "Well, my friends, um, here, ale here," and he, he calls for ale, and they bring over several mugs, and he says, "Yes, uh, continue to keep these coming, please." And um, the bartender sort of nods and shuffles off back behind the bar. The bar is now sort of gone back. The tavern has gone back to its thing, where people are no longer paying attention, uh, or seem not to be. Um, and, uh, Dodie says, So, please, tell me everything. Um, what has happened over the last few months? It's been, oh, goodness, uh, almost a year, I think, since I've seen you last. Um, how have like you been? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, 
<coughs> well, actually, oh, I kind of like, oh, sorry. Maybe you can help us out. I'm always uh, happy to help out. Ever since you've helped me, there's been nothing I've wanted as much as to help you in return. Dodie is always one who helps those who are in need, believe me. I remember it was only several months ago when someone Dodie, who had come to me. Yes. They're looking for someone. Oh, too. yes. I can find. There's many someones here. Kind of looks around. Uh, I'd forget it. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, uh, certainly. And he says, I certainly wouldn't want you to uh, run into any difficulty because, of course, and he lowers his voice and says, there's that business of, he says dramatically, the note. And he kind of sits back, looking very pleased with himself. I lean in <laughs> slowly. <laughs> <laughs> what note? He says, he says, um, well, the, he sort of looks slightly taken aback. He's like, uh, well, the, the, the note that was left here for you, of course, um, it was only about a month ago. Where is the note? Well, you see, I thought that it was not the best idea to keep something so valuable close by, so I've got it in a safe place. You'll be happy to know, though, that I've committed it to memory, and I'll be able to give you all of that information in private. Where did you bring the note? He says, to a small place nearby. Um, oh, only about five minutes walk or so. Um, I made sure to keep it in a Is place where no one would discover it. No, no, no. Why would I do that? That's absurd. That's the kind of thing that a person would do when they haven't done it before. No, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> the last time I did that, it didn't end well. Um, but no, uh, of course Take not. Take me to the note. No, <laughs> well, certainly, but I don't no. you want to... Uh, I, well, all right then. I... Yes. And he sort of stands up. Um, he says, uh, uh, Agatha, I'm just going to bring these people to someplace not at all important. And um, kind of the big, you know, wink. And Agatha's like, all right, dear. Um, and he, uh, he waves at you sort of not very surreptitiously, surreptitiously, like, you know. Um, and he walks up and then uh, to the door. And then he, like, holds up his hand as if to stop you. And then opens the door and, like, looks out both directions like everyone in the bar like that's close is looking at him doing this and then he's kind of like it gestures to you well uh -huh. Inga like while while like uh, Dodi is doing that Inga is just like whispering to Robar is it too late to just like turn around and go back to Bayard's house at this <laughs> point just like abandon I wish uh... alright then come on I can take you to where it is. <coughs> I follow him. Lead the way. Okay. So <clears throat> he actually leads you out of the inn and then up to the north. Um, probably about a five minute walk or so. Um, and uh, when he gets to, there's uh, there are these two trees, actually, that are to the north. Um, and of course, he's not all that far from the eastern uh, borders of Mirkwood. And as you catch up with him, he says, it was... Uh, I must say that when this person dropped off this note, it struck me as very odd. Um, the person, first of all, wouldn't say their name. They simply gave me this box, and they said within it was a note that was meant to be given to you. And I says, well, that's fine, but I don't know when they'll be back this way. And he says, oh, they'll be back this way, sure enough, soon enough. But you must never tell them where uh, that uh, I was here. And he stops, he goes, oh. Well, um, <laughs> that is, I, I'm sure it's fine. You don't know anything about her. Him or her. It might not be a her. It could have been a him. There's, you have no way of knowing whether it was either one because she made it very clear I should not specify who or what she might have been or he could have been. Um, and, uh, Glad to see you don't discriminate, Gindy. No, I, certainly not. I believe the importance of broadly keeping secrets. I mean, telling secrets. Uh, Reveal, giving information, learning of things that I tell you. And he goes up farther um, and um, finally gets to the base of this tree where there is this very exaggerated mound of leaves. Like, um, and remember, this is spring, right? So <laughs> this is not fall. So there's like, he literally, it looks as if someone has like gathered a bunch of branches and put them there. So he takes branches and like starts pulling them out of the way. And he says, now, I have faith that this most secret of spots 
is the kind of thing no one would have been able to see. And you note that in the morning light, probably the sun would have shone directly on this very obvious mound of leaves and branches, like, you know, and he's just like, um, I know my way around a secret or two. Yes, I do. No one can ever say that uh, Doty Brandybuck does not keep secrets. And he, you know, pu pulls out the branches. And finally, he and he continues to push them and pull them off. And then, Rabarning, as you're watching, you notice that um, he's he starts to fall silent as he's digging. And then he keeps digging, and he's kind of like, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and then he gets all the way to the bottom. Uh, there's just ground beneath. There's... The leaves are all gone, and there's no, there's nothing there. And he's like, "Ha, ah, yes, well, um, where's the box? Uh, well, it's no doubt uh, misplaced. I, uh, I'm sure I can discover it very easily. Um, I, I don't think there'll be any problem finding it at all. Oh, I just I have not. to think about where. I really hope there's not a problem finding." He says. Oh no, uh, trust trust me, my friend. I I certainly would uh, not have uh, forgotten it at all. Um, okay, I would like, um, Rabar, I would like you and Inga both, um, as he's still digging away. He's got, I should have mentioned, by the way, that because it is getting dark, he had a lantern with him, which he had ha handed to you to hold as he was digging. So I would like Rabar and Inga, both of you, to make perception checks for me, please. Um, just a note, I do see pretty well in the dark. Uh, what? then make Does it at plus two. Oh. Okay. Uh, perception, yes? Yes, perception. Uh, yeah, okay, that's awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you both are like, you're like, you know, looking, you're like, I don't, I don't see, um, and he's just like, I don't understand it. I, 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 this is the most secret spot I could possibly have imagined. It took me at least, I don't know, five minutes to build this spot up this way. Um, and he says, well, maybe, maybe, maybe Sai actually dug it into the ground. Uh, perhaps I just need to get a shovel and we can find it there. Um, he says, I, I can't imagine that anyone would have stolen it. I, I don't think. And um, so he turns around and he starts walking back, um, sort of talking to himself, muttering to himself. Um, and of course, you still have the lantern, Robar, so he doesn't yeah. seem to be paying much attention as he's wandering off into the darkness. I'm gonna like, grab him by the back of his sort of <gasps> you know, collar, bring him back. What did the note say? You said you memorized it. What yes. It? Oh, I remember. Yes, distinctly. It said um, to seek out, uh, let me think here, to seek out the the one who's known as, and he stops, his, it was White White Bill. Yes, I'm sure that was his name, was White Bill. White Wait, Bill. what was it? Sorry. White Bill. To seek out La... White Bill. Yeah, White Bill. I'm, I'm sure it was White Bill. Uh, to seek out White Bill. Um, he has uh, a farmhouse. Uh, it was in the, I think it was the the west, I believe, um, right up against the mountains of the West Upper Vales. And uh, he had information for you about the goings on in that area. Um, and absolutely, that was it. It was something about that. Now, Rabar, I want you to make another perception check here, uh, but do it at advantage because you're actually holding on to Doty at this point. Okay. 22. Yeah, I thought so. When you grab him um, by the collar and he's sort of, you know, talking to you and struggling, you actually um, see that there's something waving around in his back pocket. I snatch out of his back pocket. Okay. Um, out of it, it seems to be a folded uh, note. I hold out to him. Is this the note? Oh, you are a genius. You are certainly a Dunedain. There's no question about it. Not anyone could have discovered that note. I... I don't understand how it ended up there. I, I, my goodness, I must have done this several days ago. Um, oh, well. So you realize this means that he's been walking around with this note sticking out of his back pocket for like three days, probably is what this means. And he's like, oh, well, I, I don't know what happened to the box. But anyway, the only thing that matters is the note. That's all that was in there for sure. Uh, you'll be able to see it for yourself. There's the note, just as I promised. <laughs> I sigh and open it up and read it. So, the note is actually written in similar handwriting to the handwriting of the note that was left uh, before that was in the rushed handwriting that you mentioned. It makes reference to finding someone who is in the eastern side of the West Upper Vales and whose name is Black Tom. Now, you actually know this um, name, Black Tom, um, okay. because you've heard this before from having grown up in the area. Um, 
There is a Ballad of Black Tom, that's right. And uh, Black Tom's house is actually a fortified farmstead, which is in the eastern side of the West Upper Vales, not that far from the Anduin, actually. Um, he is a farmer, but he's a sort of... He's like one of the head farmers, basically. Um, and his family has been farming that land for generations. He's the kind of person that when... When he talks, people listen, you know, um, even though, you know, the lords, your family certainly got along well with them. But Tom was always kind of an independent, you know, he, he was happy to acknowledge that your family existed, but he wasn't necessarily going to bow to them. But not because he's disrespectful, just because he doesn't bow to anybody because he's Black Tom. Um, and um, his uh, place is very much a little bit like Bjorn's house in that it's um, kind of got this fence around it, but it's also rather fortified. And um, Tom is kind of a little bit of a random element. Um, definitively, his name is not, in fact, White Bill. Um, and uh, Dodie, as you're looking at this note, says, You can see, as I said, it was White, White Bill to the west. <laughs> uh, just, as, just as promised. What did the woman look like, Dodie? Who gave you this note? Woman? Well, how do you know she was... I mean, or, or possibly he. Uh, well, well if she were a woman, if she were... Um, she, well, she was rather tall. I only caught a glimpse of her face. She was tall and had, well, blue eyes and had sort of longer brown hair. Seemed a little bit sad, perhaps. Um, well, she reminds me a little bit of you in terms of build, anyway. Um, but she wouldn't say her name. Very mysterious she was. Um, well, sort of like you can be, I suppose. <laughs> Although... You can be direct and to the point when need be, as you realize that you still have his collar um, that you've had like this whole time. <clears throat> this Put him thing. down. Put him down a few inches that I've left for him. Um, he says, thank you. <clears throat> That's, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, anyway, um, so yes, um, she wouldn't stick around. She simply delivered this note and said to make sure that you get it. Um, she said it was important business. Um, family business, she said. Okay, family business. Did she wear any distinctive clothes? Um, only the dark cloak that, um, someone like yourself would wear. She came in the nighttime, so I didn't get, as I say, much of a glimpse of her. She came and left. I asked her to stay, said, how would I be able to get any more information or know about her? And she said... Well, first she said to not ask so many questions. I forgot that part. But then she said, um, it is not for anyone to know her name except when the time comes. She said you would know it eventually. Um, but she didn't describe why. How old did she look? And she, he sort of thinks, he says, I, well, I don't know. She could have been 30 and then she could have been 60. She kind of was hard to describe, I think. Thank you, Dodie. Oh, it's yes. always my pleasure, of course. Um, Most helpful. Yes, I, I always endeavor to be, of course. Uh, and uh, if that box ever turns up, I'll, I'll make sure to let you know. But I know there was nothing in it but the note. That's certain. Um, she made it very clear to me that no one was to open the box. Uh, and, and yes. So, anyway, um, and kind of, you know, claps his hands together and says, um, uh, Would you like a room? Uh, I'd be happy to put you up, of course, free of charge. That would be lovely, thank you. And uh, he says, wonderful, wonderful. Well, well follow me then, and um, sort of sets off at a great pace, uh, seemingly relieved. Um, you folks have a little bit of a distance between you and him if you want to talk while following him. Yeah, he definitely, that, there was definitely something else in the box. I can't check that feeling. I like have the, to agree. But... Like, why would she give him a box with a note, not just a note? Like, that's just way too... I know. Yeah. Tell you or what. like maybe like the box is like a hint to who she is, you know. In the morning when there's lights, I suggest we go down there and see if there's anything else we can dig up. You know, I think it would be smart to ask his kids that were running around because if they like, you know how kids are when they know like, ooh, no. parents are hiding something, must be something <laughs> interesting. No, it's like no, I don't know anything about I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't know nothing about kids. No, I, I think it's best you handle that particular line of questioning. Yeah. Well, Children don't like me. The feeling is mutual. 
I wouldn't. I couldn't tell why. Possibly no. This uh, this woman in here. Yeah. Tall, sad blue eyes, long brown hair, wearing a cloak not unlike one of my own. Difficult to age. These are all signs that would suggest to me she may be one of my kin, one of a Dunedain. Cousin, maybe. Sister, aunt. That those are all family members. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. Uh... <laughs> was like, do you have any sisters? Do you have any female cousins? Do you have so, any aunts? You know about. So, so, how do you want to play this great? Because I haven't like written out like a like a complex backstory. I've left it pretty much up to you in terms of what I know. I, yeah. well, it is it is up to you because if if you do have, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to give anything away. So I'll just say that I'm I'm playing this off of you a little bit. It depends on what you I know. Okay what the person is going to convey and not convey, but it depends on what you have in your backstory, because I don't want okay. to just impose it on you. Okay, so, um, I think that, uh, Redbar would have known his mother and his father and a sister, uh, and when the shadow came to, uh, their household, uh, that he was separated from all of them and hasn't seen them since, and sort of took the road. So, uh, he probably has memories of having a, uh, a sister, memories of having parents, but uh, no real know of r real way of knowing exactly what they would look like at this time, uh, or even probably their names. Uh, there's probably a lot of like repressed stuff going on there with the shadow and young memories as a child. So he's right. probably starting to remember things. He sees the stone. He gets this description of the woman. He says, "I, I think I have." I think I had a sister. Die? Or why did you say you had a sister? I haven't been in contact with any of my family members for since I was a child. I don't. I think most of them died. Well, apparently not. Maybe it's good, right? You like your sister, right? Uh, quick note, quick question. Um, sister was slightly older? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, and the answer is yes, very much. Um, her name, by the way, was Melina. Yeah, he remembers this now. Melina was her name. A little older than me. She might look like that now, if she's still alive, but would be good then, right? I guess. Well, I would say let's uh, stay the night here and let's see if we can find her tomorrow at this uh, Black Tom's place. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, you, um, with your dreams intact and your uh, possibilities intact, settle off to uh, sleep. One note that ah, I want to nope. make. Oh, go ahead, Inga. No, 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 no. Like, Inga actually tries to uh, see if the children are still running around and, like, tries to ask them and, like... They're not awake. Um, there are children, um, but they are not awake at the moment. The children's names, in case you're interested, are Dando and Rodri. Um, but, uh, and they generally spend most of their time w running around everywhere, but they are not awake at the moment. At, like, what, 6 p.m.? Yeah, um, which is which is a little bit odd, um, but you get the yeah. impression that they keep very odd hours, though. You get the impression uh, that they're up at, like, 2 in the morning and, like, running around. They don't have a lot of control over name? these kids. Dando and Rodri. Okay. Uh, good, but then she goes ask the mom, of course, because she would have told her if the kids are still awake or not. Yes, that's right. You, I was, you were getting that. I assumed you were getting yeah, that yeah. information from Ag Agatha, yeah. um, who said that she's happy to have you talk to them, um, but that they're asleep right now. Um, and it, I should say that when she says they're asleep, she's like, "At least I hope so." Um, you get the impression <laughs> that uh, because they're very young, but they don't. Yeah, she she doesn't have a lot of. It's not control. You get the impression that they're kind of free spirits. I'll put it that way. I see. Uh, I can't imagine. But yeah, then I like sleep. And then the plan for the next morning is to find the children and like go Okay. Them. Find the children and then you're also going to see if you can track down anything else that might have been the box. Oh, is yeah. that right? Once she does that, I'll go dig up anything around tracks or 
the ho a hole or something like that. The next morning. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come back to you folks. Um, but since we have Trend back for the moment, I want to um, cut back to him and the river um, in um, Bjorn's house. Uh, so let me switch up the music here because I'm glad that we have all the lively cafe stuff. But let's, let's cut out of that for a minute. Okay. Um, back to... Let's go. Where's my... Uh, give me some give me some good music like this maybe there we go um okay so uh meanwhile oh good god <laughs> Terry, that was funny. I was like, I'm doing this all of a sudden. Resob! Uh, just like, pow, the, the music. Thank you, Terry, very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. And yes, can we get some Arvini hypes for Terry with her awesomeness and the resubbing? Thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so um, back at uh, Bjorn's house, um, you folks have been involved in several um, things. And I want to start with Tani and with Bjorn, and then I'll come to you, River, as we talk about the sanctuary and, and stuff with you. Um, so you have been, um, trying to basically gain Bjorn as a patron. Um, and part of this is involving sort of several discussions that you have with Bjorn. So this particular discussion takes place, um, probably a good couple of weeks, you would guess, after, uh, Robar and Inga, uh, left to head up north, um, to gather information about, um, you know, Robar's family. Um, and, uh, you're outside actually looking at some of, uh, Bjorn's honey bee hives, uh, kind of looking at the honey that they make because your twice baked cakes are of course top notch, largely because of the ingredients. So when you got this honey, you're like, how do I make bees like this? Like these bees are unbelievable. And so you're sort of looking at this and Bjorn comes out, um, and, uh, of the house comes up behind you and, uh, says, well, Tani. So you've decided to get into the business of heart of uh, keeping bees, perhaps? Better honey than what you could make elsewhere, my friend. And Tony's got one of the bees sitting on it, because of course they're gigantic. Yep. So it's just sitting on his hand, and he's just kind of like the, you're kind of petting the bee and being like, yeah. Yes, indeed. And um, he says, uh, I've always been interested about those who are frightened of the bees and those who actually understand them. It's those second type, I think, that really gather what nature means. You know, Tani, um, we haven't had a chance to talk too much about what happened. The feelings that you had, I think. I'm not very good at talking about that stuff, but I do know what it means to be a man who'd rather not fight. If it were up to me, I'd spend all my time with the bees and not as much time dealing with the world of men. In some ways, I feel we're on the same path. <laughs> Have you gotten any more sleep of late? Off and on. Usually when... <clears throat> when I haven't had any for a while and I'm finally too exhausted not to sleep. And he says, um, I, that's the way that a lot of times it happens. But I hope you consider, too, that there's rest that sometimes is more than just a simple night's sleep can provide. This is the kind of thing that you're going to need. I have a sense that your adventures aren't over. I think you're going to go off on other ones. I hope fighting won't be part of them. But either way, there'll be conflict and confusion, and you'll be tested. And I wonder a bit about how you'll respond to the challenge. You might be, in a way, too quiet a man for something like this, Tani. Are you sure you want to spend your time adventuring. Well, there's her now. And he points out, and you can see the river is playing out in the field, the distance with Stone, who's jumping up. Uh, Stone seems to be working on some kind of flipping, like she kind of moves her hand, and then Stone kind of flips up. And he caught it, falls backwards. He doesn't totally get it yet, so he's kind of... Uh, but he seems very excited. And, um, and he says, Now look at her. She's got 
so much to her. She's full of life and promise and courage more than the usual measure. What happens when she sees more of the battles? What happens when she sees more dead? Are you going to want to spend time with people who will go down that path, Tani? Maybe you'd be better off spending your time at home with the bees and less time on the road with the shadows. I will not deny that there is a, a measure of wisdom to that. However, for all the darkness that might be ahead in her future, it is also a chance that I could be there to bring some measure of light. If she is to see fighting, she will need healing, and I can do that. He nods and he says, Yes, your healing skills have become greater, I've noticed. And what happens if you were to lose her, or the others, Inga, Robar, your companions? What if you were to lose, well, people here at home? It could have happened, you know. It very easily could have been an ambush. If we hadn't been for you, they could have overwhelmed us. I wonder how you would deal with that loss. Probably with... Probably with more sorrow than I have ever known. These, um... These few people are greater friends than I have ever had. And uh, I suspect that to lose them would be worse than the burning of my entire home. He nods and he says, there was a time when hearing something like that would have made me question the kind of Bjorning you were. You're talking about a woodman and a dwarf and a Dunedain, after all. But since I've seen the way you work together, I think I understand more now than I used to. I might understand a little bit more about, well, the way that people can work together. I don't ever expect that I'll be interested in joining some fellowship. I think I'm too well suited to be on my own and with the animals. But to the extent that people can work together, I think you found a good group. And he sort of um, turns and uh, walks off and looks off to the east uh, towards, you know, Mirkwood, obviously way, way in the distance. Uh, and he says, Did I ever tell you about the Grey Heath? I don't believe so. A long time ago, when I was young, I followed a band of warriors in battle against forces that were loyal to the filth that emerges from Dol Guldur. They fought a terrible battle on the Grey Heath. We won, if by win, I mean there were more of us left than them. The bodies of the orcs and the other crawling dead things were piled and burnt. Nothing has grown on that spot since. And I have seen myself in my wanderings, eerie lights, strange sounds at night. The point, Tani, is that death never really leaves us. Loss never leaves us. The only way to overcome it is to create new memories in the old. For me, it is to spend time with my animals here. But if I ever come back to that place, it will return to me, all of it. I tell you this because I don't want that for you. When you come to that place, I would that you turn your back on your own gray heath and by safe paths at last, come back to a place called home. It would be my wish. I 
At this point, I feel that my gray heath, you and I, you and I were on that same battlefield may not be quite the same as your Grey Heath, but it is mine in its way. <clears throat> and I had a a small taste of it again in the gloomy fold and lost myself to it. But fortunately I had friends to help guide me back and uh, and I had you to stay in my hand from furthering down that path without realizing it when it would have done me the greatest harm of all and he um, he nods and he says, I am glad to hear it. I have sometimes rushed to judgment too quickly. I am pleased that I could be a guide instead of and for always a killer. And uh, he turns and he says, Tani, he walks over to you, puts a hand on your shoulder. He says, I cannot ask this of you. But I would say that if you wish, and you have need again, I would act as that guide. And in turn, I would hope that you would act as a guide for your companions. They will need you all in their own ways. They have their own talents, their own abilities, their own skills, and you will rely on them too. But they'll need someone like you, Tani, sometimes a Bjorning with strength and knowledge and healing. You may be their only light in that darkness. If I do that for you, would you do that for them? Within less than half a heartbeat. He, um, so he sort of puts the other hand on his shoulder. He says, good. I would have expected no less. He says, um, now... I must attend to some other things. See if you can't spend some more time with your bees, won't you? And he uh, turns and he sort of uh, walks off uh, into the sidelines. He is now your patron, by the way. Um, River, you, in the meantime, have been working on uh, trying to open this up as a sanctuary. And um, what I want to do is uh, take you to uh, that evening, actually. Um, and uh, you are inside Bjorn's house, uh, resting as you normally are. It is, of course, a place of safety. Uh, there's nothing you have to worry about outside. But in the distance, uh, on this one particular evening, you're having difficulty sleeping. And you have had um, sort of tossed and turned. You've been bothered by dreams. Um, and you notice as stone sort of slumbers by your side that occasional whimpering and sort of, you know, uh, suggests that he may be experiencing uh, some bad dreams as well. And um, there is a sound that you hear um, sort of calling out uh, outside the house. Um, it seems like some kind of... A howl wouldn't really sort of describe it. It's more like some kind of strangled cry. Um, this kind of like, this kind of almost like something like that. Um, it's pretty disturbing. And as you wake up out of your dream, you hear this sound coming far off in the distance, but clearly audible, however. Uh, none of the animals other than Stone, who I just mentioned, but none of the rest of them seem to notice. Um, but you definitely do. And you were at the moment asleep. Tawny Bear is also sleeping as well at the moment. Um, <clears throat> she will wake with a start. So she can clearly, she can actually hear the sound. Yes. Um, and it, that's a good question. That's a good point, by the way. It started in your dream and continued, like, as you came out of it. Like, the, dream, the sound is still there. 
she looked to where Tommy was asleep. And, uh, and just sort of look at him for a second and then decide not to wake him. And then grab her weapons and just head outside with Stone. Okay. Um, all right. As you get outside, you can hear more of this. Um, and uh, it seems to be far off in the distance. In fact, if you had to guess, you would say that it's coming probably from the area of the Carrick, which you may remember is sort of directly west. Now, normally it is several hours travel um, to get there if you were doing it on a horse, um, but you do have horses that are available to you, so you could do this if you wish. It'll take you several hours, but um, you could do that if you wanted to, but that seems to be where the sound is coming from. So it doesn't actually sound like someone is in, in pain or trouble? Well, that's uncertain. Okay. It sounds like loud, strangled cries. Um, it could be that someone's in pain and trouble, but they're not nearby you. The thing that's odd is how distinctive the sound is, though. like how, how clear the sound is, you know, as if it were happening right near you, but it's clearly from a great distance. Maybe it's just a trick of the acoustics, of the way things, the, the way the wind has caught it or something, but it feels very close, even though it is a distance away. Okay. Um, hmm. Can she roll perception to see if it sounds like there is, like there's pain in the sound or if it's a sound of fighting? Uh, sure. Let's have you make a perception check, sure. So we're talking 17. Um, it sounds to you like cries for help, maybe. But it's not distinctive. It's not help me, but it just, if you had to guess, it sounds like that more than pain. Because it's someone who's repeatedly calling, but they're constantly being cut off. In fact, the way you would describe it, it's as if someone is constantly calling for help and then being choked. Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. So is she... The horses that are around there, is, um, is she... Does she know that she's, like, allowed to saddle them at this point without asking? Yeah, you get the impression that you are. Cool. Um, okay. I'm imagining that she's gotten up and gone to the door at this point. Yep. Um, so, uh, I think what she's going to do is go back inside and shake Tawny awake. <laughs> I think, I think someone's in trouble outside. Uh, sounds like, can, can you hear this? Um, try to listen. Uh, make a perception check for me, Tony. Our talk. See if my internet cuts out when I roll this. <gasps> <laughs> you, you don't. Um, you hear the sighing of the wind um, and so forth. Uh, not very heavy wind. It's, um, it is a mid-May uh, evening, so it's a little warm, but it's not hot, hot. Um, no, you, you don't hear anything in particular. No. I, I heard as if someone was, was crying for help and being, being cut off. I, I don't know. I want, to, I want to go out. I just I don't know if they'll need healing or not. And I don't know if you'd like to come with me. Well, there's two ways to find out. One, you go find out and come back and tell me or two let's just go yeah let's do that yeah it sounds like it, it sounds so clear or it sounded so clear but it, it sounded like it was coming from the carrot so that's uh water water can make sound travel a very long way all right well let's just go okay so you folks set off on um, your horses to the west, and as you follow um, the sound for a good hour or so, River, you hear every few minutes the sound of the cry. Tani does not hear it until about an hour in when, Tani, you do begin to make out sort of faint um, kind of sound. It sounds like, like sort of strangled cries. But it actually, as you're traveling, you're angling north, like the sound is leading you north of the Carrick. More north, not directly north, but more north than the Carrick would be. Um, and in fact, let me just pop up the, let's get rid of this, move down here. So you're like, um, kind of like this way a little bit. 
So you're you're heading basically north of uh, where the Carrick would be, um, and um, the uh, land around is relatively quiet, not unnaturally so, but relatively quiet. Nothing disturbs you, stands in your way, um, and as you get closer and closer, you hear more of this. Um, and finally, you find yourself getting close to the river itself. Uh, not in this case, the river, the river, but you know the sound of the river, um, which. Speaking of sounds of river, here we go. So, uh, as you get closer um, to it, you can hear more of these um, strangled cries, and then you begin to see perhaps uh, what this might be. In the Great River itself, there is a um, kind of a green, almost like an islet, um, perhaps more than an island. Um, it is uh, overrun with willows and with something which is known as gallows weed. Um, and this is something, Tani, which I believe you would probably know. Um, gallows weed is actually a tree hanging plant that can be dangerous. And I'll talk more about the implications of this in a minute. Um, but there are willows and gallows weed, and there are these branches which hang over the river that trail long strands of weed upon the waters. Um, and the sound that you hear comes from this place. It is popularly known in the land of the Bjornings as the Isle of Strangling Trees because this thing, um, this gallows weed, actually is a, of course, a plant, but it does not mean uh, good for any creatures. It stretches from tree to tree. And what happens sometimes is that when people get too close, the gallows weed will literally pull up, basically coil itself around a victim's neck and then pull it up to strangle him. Um, and so it's a place that basically people know to sort of stick, you know, stay away from. There has been talk among the Bjornings in the past of basically just cutting all of those trees to the ground because they're not doing anyone good. But Bjorn has resisted that because he's claimed that there is something about the place that affects those who go on it or near it. And he's kind of somewhat superstitious, I guess you might say, about the place that's there. That said, a lot of the victims often leave behind a lot of, you know, treasure and stuff like that. Um, but it is not a place that people around the area ever go into. This strangled cry, though, seems to be coming from somewhere on the Isle of Strangling Trees. Would, would River know about this? No. no. Because it's not a huge place and it's not, it's sort of a local phenomenon. Um, Tawny would, for the reasons I mentioned, but not you. And he'll relate that. Also, Amal, you're a little quiet. Um, could you come oh. up in your mic just a bit? Sure. Yeah. Can you hear me better? Uh, well, yeah, but you're kind of leaning forward toward the mic now. No, um, I've also come <laughs> closer to it. Uh, let me see if... Um... Yeah, maybe just like if you're able to adjust the gain on your end just a touch. Because I noticed when I turned you up, then it turns like, Hello! I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so... I, I'm, it might be that it's taken from the wrong mic. Um, Could be. No, it's the right mic. I was going to say, it sounds like the normal mic. It sounded fine. It just sounded a little quieter. Um, okay, if you can just do what you can fiddle with it um, as we do with it. So, um, okay, so what do you folks want to do? Uh, this cry is happening about mm, every five minutes ish or so. River looks at Tommy and back to the island and says, Well, we want to see if the superstitions are true. As much as I don't want to go over there, I feel like we have to. Whoever that is isn't going to last very long. All right. And so we have to cross the river, right? We have to, or like cross wade into the river to the island uh cross um because wading is probably not going to happen here you'd have to you'd have to swim it somehow um or take a boat although there's not a boat obvious around here um but yes okay uh are the right so it's too deep for the the horses to, to board probably um although it the problem is the strength of the current more than the depth um you know, they might be able to do it, um, but they also could slip on it um, going across, but... Okay, so probably what should happen is the same thing where we, we forded before, where River could go up 
across with a rope and uh, and help Tawny to cross, but we need the horses on the other side. So. Okay. That seems reasonable. Um, um, so if you're gonna, so if you want to do that, um, then I'm gonna ask you to make um, an athletics check um, as you actually, go across. What River's gonna do actually is say so. Uh, I can go. How how far across is this? Like, can she still call back to? Tony yes. Which is on the other side? Yes. Well? Yes. Mm -hmm. it's pretty narrow. Yeah. Uh, so she's going to uh, she's going to look across it and say, "Why don't I go across and tell you what I find there?" And you can stay with the animals. That is probably wisest, but be wary of any vines into the water from the trees. Because you'll wind up in there with them. All right. Um, well, be wary of any vines. Any vines. Is good. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Stone looks up at you, <laughs> like he's he's like ready to go. He, he clearly he's not. He doesn't seem to be. He seems nervous about this place that he's looking at, even though he's never been there. But uh, and by the way, the horses are a little bit too. You can tell that they're kind of like. I mean, they're not like going to throw you, but they're definitely a bit nervous about this area. She's going to look at Stone and, and scratch him behind the ears and say, "Stone, I'm going to stay here with." Long, okay? I mean it this time. <laughs> no, don't be a hero this time. <laughs> okay. All right. So he um, he sort of heads over to the horses. He kind of lies down his head between his paws, but he's sort of staring at you. So she's going to uh, take some rope, hand it to Tawny, and say, if you can tether it on this side, I'll at least, if you have to come over for whatever reason, I'll try to make it a little easier for you. Athletics check. Yes. So you're going to make an athletics check as you go across. Okay. So, yeah, you're able to make your way across. Um, the, uh, the river, um, which was swollen about a month ago from the melting river springs and all that, uh, the winter uh, snow springs and so forth, that has begun to, you know, go down a little bit. So the current isn't as bad. And you're able to make your way over um, to one side of the bank. And as you look up, you can tell it sort of looms ominously above you. There are indeed trees, in some cases planted right to the edge. Um, and actually, uh, inside, and there's many sort of like weeds and things kind of trailing down. You notice, River, as you get close, sort of bearing in mind Tawny Bear's uh, warning, that there are some of these weeds and so forth that are trailing on the ground, or trailing on the surface of the water, I'm sorry, that almost seem to reach out to you, like not just in the current, but you almost see they're sort of trailing in your direction. And like if you hadn't been paying attention... You know, you got the impression that they were almost sort of trailing in direction. It's a little creepy. Um, and as you pull yourself up on the other side, you're in a, a more or less clear area. Um, but to sort of make this lock down, you're going to need to tie it around uh, the uh, trunk of the tree uh, that's near the edge, one of the trunks of the trees, if you want to do that. Okay. She'll do that and look up at the tree at the same time and say, turn it about fair play, right? And not tie it up such knots around it um and uh can she is there anything to see in terms of people um make a perception check for me please but i'm going to need you to do it at disadvantage because it's very thick the area that you're trying to look through okay so we're talking 14 um wait is that the disadvantage yes Disadvantage, right? So, um, you think maybe, River, that in the center, and again, this is not a very big island, but you think that in the center of the island, you think you see what might be a glowing light or something in the middle there that seems to be highlighting a wall or a stone, you know, maybe a building or something. 
um, which is weird on multiple levels, most of all the idea that there's a light somewhere, but there seems to be a flickering light of some kind, not moonlight, which is in, um, which is in the center of this area. And remember, it's now about probably, I don't know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, something like that. So there's something um, there in sort of the center of the island, but you can't make it out very well, obviously, and you would need to go much closer to see more detail. Tawny, there's, there's a light somewhere in the middle of the island. It's, it's flickering. Uh, I'm going to go and get a, a closer look. Have I heard anything like any tales of like lanternfish? You know, on this island. Will of like, the Wisp. Yeah. Um, come and investigate. <laughs> exactly. The only thing you have heard, because there's been obviously stories about this Isle of Strangling Trees, is that some wonder whether or not the gallows weed and the trees and the plants were planted deliberately, because there have been persistent rumors of ruins on the island. Um, what that means, like what the ruins are, who they belong to, or what is unclear to you. Um, but there have been rumors of that before, but not anything about Lanternfish or Will the Wisp specifically, no. Most of the time, because people who go on the island don't, don't leave it, and or they just stay away and talk about how terrible it is, um, like the local folk do. Take a torch. All right. <clears throat> Does she have a torch? Does she have a torch? <laughs> it's an excellent question. Um, uh, double check and see if she is. I'll, I'll be nice and assume that it didn't get damp in your crossing of the river. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's got a leather bag. Um, Super water resistant. Uh, traveling gear? Does, does a torch count as traveling gear? Let's say yes. Um, okay. So, yes, you have a torch. Um, okay. So, yes, you can have one. Uh, however, you're going to have to... I don't, I don't want to be pedantic about it, but you, you are going to have to... You have to light it, yeah. Of course, yeah. Naturally. Um, hmm. What does this place feel like? Does she feel... Like, is there... Uh, not necessarily shadow because she has a shadowy sense thing, but does the place actually feel like there are people there or like she's being watched or anything like that? I would not say people feeling like she's being watched. Yes, absolutely. There is okay. a presence about this island. And uh, so she, I mean, she's from Rosgobel right. and I feel like, uh, I feel like Radagast would probably have things to say about ways to, to treat trees with respect that don't involve yes so would would, <laughs> would uh, lighting a torch <laughs> be a disrespectful thing to do here uh, yes but then again not all trees are good ones right and it's not necessarily the trees that are bad right right exactly okay all right um She's going to take a torch out. Uh, she's going to... Um, actually, but she's going to take it out. She's going to look at it. And before she lights it, uh, she's going to call out and basically announce herself and say, Hello, I am the river of Roscobel. I've heard someone crying for help here, and I've come to assist if I can. There is no response, but the trees themselves, and this probably is impossible, but it feels like they loom over you um, at, at the sound of your voice. A river, you say? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, all right. So it's a, if there's no response, then she does actually like light the torch with whatever means one has. A tinderbox? Is that what we do? Uh, yes. Um, the issue is going to be whether or not I'm going to allow that the tinderbox also did not get in. Uh, I think probably, here's what we'll say. I think you'll be able to light it, but it's going to take you a few minutes. Um, oh. While you're in the process of doing it, Tani, are you staying on your side? For now, I mean, I'm, you know, securing the, the rope to whatever I can. Okay. I, I tell you what, if, it, if you can also roll a die, if it doesn't look like it will take a minute, she'll, she'll just keep walking and let her eyes adjust. Okay. Um, so, um, so let's do that. So you push your way through 
um, through this. And uh, this place is indeed got many of these, um, the trees again, very close together. The trees, the trunks of the trees wind up unnaturally, some of them almost curving around each other in some bizarre sense of embracing each other. There is uh, these, again, these weeds that hang down, these branches that hang down. Um, and as you go past them, some of them, as they brush past, almost seem to catch on your ankles, sort of like you're just, you know, going past, but they seem to catch on your ankles for longer. Like there's sometimes when you look down and you swear that the thing is actually somehow wound its way around your ankle, as opposed right. to just being in the way, like stuff that would not, you know, so you, you kind of push through. Um, and when you get to the center, you actually um, see that indeed there is what looks like a small, um, what might have been like a house at some point, perhaps a decent sized house actually, which is now completely overgrown with willows, with branches, um, with, uh, you know, more of this gallows weed that I made reference to. Um, a lot of the stuff that's there as well. Okay. Is there something that looks like a door? Uh, not from this side, um, but the walls are largely broken down. Like you could probably climb into them. Um, the only issue is going to be doing that and also being careful about the gallow weed because there's a lot of that around here. Right. So she's going to also, I think, keep her axes in in hand in case any chopping of vines and stuff needs to happen in a pinch. Um, uh, she's going to call out again and say hello. Um, there is again no response. But you think you might hear from within the sort of bowels of this house kind of a... Okay. So it's like the sound you heard before, but but much more muted, quieter now. And like it is coming from within. Yes. Okay, uh, she's going to see if there's any, any sort of... Going to try and come in however she can, whether it's by climbing or whether it's by kicking in a door. Okay. So uh, you make your way around um, to one spot where the wall seems to be more broken down, basically. Um, and uh, you sort of climb over uh, the wall and find yourself on the first floor of this broken down house. The second floor above you, you can see that really only the outer walls have survived. The second floor is mostly just collapsed. And so there's no real way to get up there. Uh, and there's very little up there anyway, maybe like a rafter, but there's nothing that they like would hold anything that you can see. There's a lot of rubble and stuff like that on the ground. But there is also, um, as you're sort of standing there, you can see that there is what might have been some many, many, many years ago, might have been a bed, but is now sort of destroyed, you know, turned over, cabinets destroyed, turned over, all that sort of thing. Um, and as you're sort of standing there, you suddenly hear right underneath your feet like coming from right underneath you and as you look you can see that right next to you almost is a trap door that leads downwards well presumably leads downwards um the sound is coming from down there she opens it and, and goes down as quickly as she can okay as you open it this feeling of um i don't know whether you had this experience but when i uh, growing up um i grew up in a house where we had a portion of our basement that was very high water table so it was very musty and we had to like get a dehumidifier down there in the whole nine yards but if you went down there at certain times especially if you went down during the summer months um it would be it would it felt sort of damp despite the dehumidifier and there was a kind of musty smell um and if you were to sort of hold your hand against the concrete basement you could almost feel the dampness that's sort of what this feels like it's almost like you're walking into dampness river as you go down into the middle of this um the air feels heavy and your steps are heavy correspondingly as you sort of go down the steps also are half rotten um so you have to be careful as you make your way down um and there are sort of mounds of dirt um, that are here and there and um, as you get down below you can hear again the sort of um, the cries have fallen silent but you can f hear your own footsteps sort of almost like like as you're kind of through the mud uh, almost that's down below um, and there is of course no light down here just your torch and even your torch uh, which you did finally manage to let uh, light down here is kind of sputtering um, fitfully down here 
Uh, and there's, can I see anything that looks like a person by its body? Not, like not from this spot, but it's there. You'd have to go a little farther. The ground is very uneven, uh, and there's a lot of mounds and dirt, you know, all piled up in different places. And so there's, you, you would have to go farther in to see. Okay, and she, she will. Uh, first, she'll uh, call, call out, hoping um, to see if it. I don't know if she'll reach. Her voice will reach or not, but she'll call out to Tawny, uh, saying, uh, "She probably would have done this before going in, to be fair." Okay. But uh, there's some kind of weird house. <laughs> I'm going into it. I, I think this might be where the person is. Make a perception check for me, Tawny. We'll see whether you hear that. Please fail. <laughs> <laughs> fail? <laughs> well, 14. 14. Um, you, th you don't know, ex you hear something, but your voice, uh, Rivers, almost seems to fall dead in the middle of this house. Not, not down below. I know you did this yeah. before, but like surrounded by all the branches and trees. You, Tani, you hear something like, a house maybe, but that's all. Yes, I told you there were ruins. <laughs> all right. So she'll just continue to go in carefully. Okay. Um, all also right. looking around going, what the hell? <laughs> like, yeah. Are we in a Jeff Vandermeer novel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you just kind of squish your way um, along the basement floor. And then um, as you are uh, kind of making your way, you hear this sort of strangled uh, cry again. Um, again, but it seems to be quiet. And now it's not clear where it is. It's sort of all around you. Like you're, you're obviously on the right level with it, but you don't know where exactly the hell this thing is. It's sort of around here someplace. Um, and so you're not, you don't really know what to make of that. Um, and, uh, so you continue to go. Then you get to, um, the sort of outer wall of this basement of the house, which is half stone and half covered now in, you know, dirt and mud. And as you get over there, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Oh, great. Something I'm about to explain. Yeah. <clears throat> ha. Wow. Wow. Oh yeah! Um, oh, you just like park. You just like parkour <laughs> out of the way. Hooray. Something, and you think it is some kind of a hand, shoots out of the mud, and grabs but misses your leg as you sort of dodge out of the way. Mm. And then the hand remains with its, uh, the hand clutch like the arm is visible. You can see that some of the flesh is slightly rotted, um, but it's not moving though. I mean, it's not, you know. Like a like a creature that you fought before, like a white or something, or would would be still moving here. It just stopped. Right. It just does, it, and it's rotty. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, it certainly doesn't look like healthy. Right. Okay. Uh, does it look like it might be that of a person needing help, or that it's more like a monster? Can't tell. Can't tell. It, although it's about, although I will say it's about human sized. It's not. Okay. It's not monstrously sized. Okay. Uh, really, like, ah. And then reach out to, to try and grab the arm herself. Okay, you can do that actually. Uh, okay. You grab it; it doesn't move. I mean, uh, you okay. can you can like it doesn't like react. It you just okay. you just grab it. It's ice cold. Pull? Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> this is really gross. <laughs> um, All of this sucks. <laughs> this really sucks. Okay, and there at this point there is no more little strangling. Not sounds. at the moment, no. Okay, uh, she's, how can I put this? Presumably someone who's still able to make strangled noises isn't going to be ice cold, unless the mud itself is ice cold, right? True. The mud itself is not ice cold? Well, the mud itself is pretty damn ice cold. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, she's, okay, she's going to try and actually grab this icy arm and, and pull, uh, to pull out. So you, mud. so you pull, actually make, uh, let's see, ha let me have you make an athletics check for me. Okay. Um for this. Because it would make sense if someone were drowning in mud, but... Yep. Okay. So you pull with a mighty pull, and pulling out of the mud, whoosh, the body sitting up, is a young face. 
There is mud coming out of the mouth. There is um, mud sort of caked on the face. The face itself is not only dirty, but looks like some of the skin may itself have flaked away. It is if you were looking at a dead creature. But the face of the dead creature is the face of the 19-year-old that your party helped Fennis. And you see this for a moment, and there's kind of a moment of shock where you look at this, and it looks at you, and then, and you're sort of staring at this face, and then it makes, and it reaches forward for you, and then you wake up. And you find yourself in um, Bjorn's house. Now, when you wake up, you're like, um, you are lying next to Tani. And, uh, you know, because, you know, where you had been, like, Tani was sleeping, you're like, whatever. You wake up, and you think to yourself, like, just the early light of morning is beginning to filter through the windows, and you're like, oh, oh, yeah. But on your hands, River, are caked mud underneath the fingernails. <gasps> oh, God! <laughs> this is totally a Jeff Van Der novel. Uh, <clears throat> Rivers stares horrified at this and looks at Tawny and Tawny and just is is Stone asleep there still? Yes. Just flexes her fingers uh, and and she just kind of like more or less kicks Tawny in shock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Like, <laughs> Tony. Mm. Uh, you know, a shake would suffice. <laughs> Tony, I need you to, uh, I need you to, um, I don't know, uh, can you, uh, no, you won't want to hit me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> can you just spin this top Are you and actually? see? <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, she says, Tony, do you, do, did, did you dream last night? Uh, more than usual. You don't remember going with me to the the island of the gallow trees? Do I remember that? Uh, <laughs> so you remember, well, so first of all, you do know the, this isle of strangling trees. Yeah. You, you have heard of that. Um, you don't remember that, although you do have sort of faint memories of your dream of travel, like of, of you know, like maybe being on a horse or something. Um, you remember that, and you remember the sound of the rushing water, um, but that's, that's what you remember. No, not really. <sighs> my, my hands have mud on them. And I dreamt that we went to the island. You stayed on the shore and I crossed over. And the trees were reaching for my ankles, but I went to a ruined house in the middle of the island and I went inside and I, I, we'd been hearing cries. There, there were, they seemed so clear, but they were far away. And then we went down, I went down and there was a hand coming out of the mud and it, it was Fennis, the, the, that young man, Fennis. And I don't know if he was dead or not, but can we go there? Can we go to that island? Uh, can we? Yes. Should we? Uh... It was so real. He he reached for me. He tried to... He tried... I... And the whole place seemed like it was leaning in over me. And Why are my hands covered in mud? Why can't... I just... Did you do any midnight gardening? I'm no good at gardening. So is that a no? No, no, not that I remember. It was so real. And 
That island is known for things like that. You told me this in the dream. I didn't know anything about it. You told me that it was a place of superstition and that there were ruins in the middle of it. And uh, you said those things. This is very strange. Maybe we should talk to Bjorn about it. I don't know if he's back yet, but we can. It is morning, by the way, uh, albeit extremely early morning. Um, so if you want to go out, you can do that. Um, and uh, as you go out, you actually do see um, Bjorn coming in from outside of his complex, outside of the home. And he says, um, good morning, uh, River. To be seen. Um, he says, and he kind of looks at you askance at that for a minute and says, um, um, River, I have some news that you might find disquieting. Word came up from Roscabel that one of your kin was found drowned some distance south of here. They said you knew him. His name was Fenis. I'm now going to jump back to Will and to uh, Terry, Robar, and Inga. Um, Yellow. So, Robar and Inga, um, you folks were heading over um, this inn here. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, you were heading up here to the uh, northwest. You were going to try to go back over the upper vales, I believe, to get to Black Tom. Is that? That's right. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to go. Oh, but oh, that's right. First, you wanted yeah. to ask the kids. That's right. That's right. Yes. So, uh, yes, let's deal with that. So, first of all, you do find the kids um, the next day, and as I mentioned, we're talking about Dando and Rodri. Um, when I say you find them, you sort of find their backs because most of what they do is spend their time kind of running around away from you. <laughs> um, so you're kind of like, of course. so they're they're kind of running away. They seem to be um, at the moment chasing after a chicken in the yard, and so they're kind of laughing as one of them chases the chicken. And all right, got him this way and then the other one goes about it no 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 and you go this way that's not how you play a dog you play a dog this way and you he like kind of gets down and is on hands and knees and is trying to like run towards the chicken the chicken is sort of running but you get the impression this is kind of an old and weary chicken that has kind of been through this and so the chicken's kind of like you know like it, it sort of does a half-hearted like walking away quickly but it doesn't really run type of thing yeah, okay, so what Inga does is that she waits for the chicken to ru run into her direction and she just picks it up from the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so you're now holding the chicken. And the kids come up. Oh, you caught him. I guess that means you win. Oh. oh. oh what Who? do I win? Um, they say, well, um, and they, and they sort of look at each other. We never really caught her before. Um, we don't know. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe you can you get can... some eggs. And the other I one pokes, other one elbows him and says, Dando, you can get eggs from inside. Oh, yeah. Well, um, maybe you can take one of our feathers. Well, I mean, I, I had something specific in mind if you want to hear about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't suppose you guys have seen um, a chest, uh, not a chest, a wooden box. Uh, about, yay, big, roughly. A box? Uh, that you found, like, have you maybe found a box, like, near the trees that, like, she points, like, the direction where the trees were? And, um, make an insight check for me, please. Yes. Oh, 15. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, as you say this, you notice that the two kids glance at each other. Like, it's very obvious that they kind of, are, like, look at each other and then, um... We don't really see boxes much. Uh, we spend too much time going after chickens. <laughs> yeah, um, sometimes. Well, if you tell me, like, if you uh, have perhaps seen anything or help me find it, then I will teach you how I managed to, call, uh, to catch the chicken. And you see they're sort of like, gears are running in their head. You're like, kind of like, hmm. And they're kind of like, well, um, if we tell you, you're not going to tell mom and dad, are you? Because... They're not, they are not. were not supposed to find things. I mean, we find them all the time. We're not supposed to tell them that we find them because they get mad. I promise by everything that I will not tell your parents about the box. And they sort of look at each other and um, Rodri says, all right, well, here, it's over this way. 
and they kind of bring you, um, Dando and Rodri bring you over to this place, um, which actually just looks like ground, like regular ground. And then one of them um, digs, and you can see that the minute they begin to dig, that they've actually made it so that the grass looks like it's just part of the regular earth, but it's actually just loose grass. In other words, it's 50 times better than whatever the <laughs> hell uh, Doty was trying to do last night. Of course, um, of course it is. So when they, they bring up this box, and they say, we found this, yeah, the other night. Um, and there was, um, there was this box here, and there was something inside it, too. But we didn't know because Dad was coming and we got scared. Well, not at Dad, really. Just that we thought he'd take it from us. Sometimes Dad takes things and then he loses them, too. And, well, we didn't want to lose this because it was really special. Yeah, yeah. Shiny. Smart, very smart of you. And so they hand over the box. And as they're about to hand it to you, it's Roger who has it. And he says, oh, you're going to tell us about that chicken, right? Yes, I am, brother. And, like, first of all, like, being a takes the box and looks inside it. Does, like, anything about it, like, immediately catch your eye? Yes, the silver key, which is lying at the bottom of the box. Ooh, well, that's interesting. Okay, so, like, she, put, she puts, like, the, the box away into, like, one of her pouches or something, um, and then goes to teach the kids how she caught the chicken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious. How, how did she catch the chicken? <laughs> just, really... Well, like, she, she just waited for it to run her way, and then she, like, picked it up. Like, she, she teaches them, like, to Patiently wait. Ah, patience. Basically. So yeah. you do this for about 10, 15 minutes, and at one point, Dando's like, this is really hard. Just waiting, waiting for something to happen. Yeah, but it's sometimes really worth it to just, like, wait for things to come your way. And um, as you say this, you can see Robar um, walking back from the area where he has unsuccessfully been digging around trying to find anything. Um, and the two kids look up at you and him and, oh, um, yeah, he's he's the big one. He, you know, he's one of those Dunedain guys. Dunedain. It's Dunedain. Oh, Dunedain, yeah. Um, I hear that they are really quiet, like, and they go into the shadows and no one ever sees them. And then they jump out and then they kill like 10 orcs and then they jump back into the shadows. And is that true? Does he jump? Can he catch chickens like you? At this he point, Robar, you can actually. He orcs with one blow. You hear this as you come up, Robar, now. Yeah, you can. Folds his arms. <laughs> They're like, oh, 20 orcs with one. That must have been really hard. Did you have to practice? They say this to you, Robar. I look at them. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the box. Well, you can't no, the, see, you can't it see right the box. Box the is in the pouch. pouch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I look at them and say, yes, now run along. So Wait. that you two can kill orcs. Yeah, and they I say, have something for your for your for your treasure hoard. And she gets out of her pockets two of the black feathers she found like way way in the beginning back in the Mirkwood. Yeah. Of the black pheasants and gives like two of the feathers to the. Oh, and they're like, the oh, are these? I got this in the Mirkwood from a giant bird. It was enormous. Giant. You should have seen it. I bet those are from Grimhawks, they are. Oh, Grimhawks are really scary. All right, we're going to pretend to be Grimhawks, and then we're going to go kill, and we're going to let them know right after we killed 20 orcs, because he said it was okay, right? Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll go find 20 orcs and kill them. All right, sounds good. Thanks for letting us know. Thanks for ha giving us permission. And they go running Bye. off. Have fun um, storming the castle. Somewhere. <laughs> We so are totally go. rescuing those kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's Probably. the seed for episode 12 right now. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, the, the bitter return of, of Dando and Rodri. Uh, okay, so um, they go running off, and you guys are left by uh, yourselves. Look what I got. You show them the chicken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken's oh. like, oh. oh, That's a chicken. <laughs> Oh, oops, wrong pocket. Uh, also, check me behind your gets in box. <laughs> oh, you yeah. found the box. I found the box. Okay, uh, I... <laughs> clink, 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 clink. <laughs> yep. Thank you. And I will... Is there an obvious way to open it up? Um, yeah, it looks, uh, it looks like it's not locked. Um, it looks like there's just a little one of those swivel latches, you know, that like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. There's a little eye hole in the bottom level and the top level has a little thing that swivels so that it the, the goes through that eye hole to keep it closed. So if you just swivel it out, then you can open it easily if you wanted to. I swivel it open. 
There is inside a silver key, Robar. Um, it's small and fairly intricate. And most interestingly to you is that it looks almost untouched. Um, like it's not dirty or anything like that. It looks pretty clean, actually. Um, and unscratched, even. Well, we're gonna need this. Just as always said and looked around. Shut key. Okay. Is there anything else interesting about the book? Like I said, maybe a crest or something on it? No, it's a plain key. Um, does not no, have... No, not the key, the box. Oh, I see the box. Uh, no, the box is actually a plain wooden box. That is dirty. I mean, that, that doesn't look to be anything special. It does have, like, a soft undercoating, uh, like, or I should say inner coating, like a, not velvet, but, but like cloth, basically. But, um, but no, the outside of it looks to be dirty and, and is unmarked. Okay. So no, like, tiny, like, foot things that you can, like, turn away to reveal, like, a hidden chamber or No, something. it doesn't look like this is a big enough box to have any real secrets to it. If it is, it's very well hidden, but no, you don't think so. We've got to get to finding this black tongue. Let's do that. Okay. But first, breakfast. <laughs> Alright, so when you head in, you have a delicious breakfast uh, consisting, consisting of an omelet of uh, quail eggs. Um, there is uh, fresh bacon uh, rashers that you have right there. They make a certain kind of hash brown, um, you know, that, that you like as well. Um, and uh, as you're sort of, you know, eating that, it's absolutely delicious. You see no sign of Doty. Um, and uh, Agatha is the one who actually serves you. Um, and she says... So I understand you'll be heading off then today. That's correct. And she nods. She says, All right. Um, well, just be real careful if you do. Um, I don't know where you're bound, but if you're heading up back to the place you went before, I know you said you were heading back up to the West Upper Vales some time ago. It's We've gotten some strange visitors in from there. There was one now that came to see Dodie. Oh, a few days ago. Um, well, Doty wouldn't talk about it, except he said that it was a woman, and I wasn't, he wasn't ever to tell anyone that it was a woman, and that he said that she was wearing a cloak, and that she gave him a box, and she goes through the whole story, basically. And she says, oh. um, but I love my Doty, but sometimes he doesn't really understand the danger. I heard her, you see. When she was leaving, she was walking away, and I saw her look back over her shoulder. And I, it was like she was right next to me. She said, he'll come soon. And then, then we'll revisit the past. And I think that is where we will call a uh, halt to the festivities today, because it is two minutes after 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and yeah, we have a little bit of the, uh, news of the River and Tani, and we have, of course, Ingen Robar. During our next session, we will actually get into the fourth episode, but I had a feeling this was going to be a little bit more of involved fellowship phase, so, um, there's adventuring happening even in the fellowship phase, so, um, yeah, so we will see as we get more backstory to everybody. Um, good stuff today, guys. I, I thought this was, uh, it was an enjoyable session to kind of see individually people gathering some some knowledge uh, about themselves, uh, whether I made it into a Jeff Vandermeer novel or not. Uh, I will start, as always, down below with um, Amal. And uh, Mal, I hope you enjoyed. And where will the fine people see you next, since it will not be on Twitter for a while longer? So where will they see yes. you instead? Uh, so uh, you can find me on, uh, on my drip. Uh, that's uh, d.rip slash my name. Um, I'll, I'll put a link there shortly. Uh, so you can sign up there for like zero dollars and just get notified whenever I make a public post. Um, it's basically like Patreon, but by Kickstarter. Uh, you can also sign up for, for other tiers if you're interested in more of my writing and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but uh, beyond that, if you want to see me uh, in person, um, you can find me at the Wakefield Literary Festival that's happening at the end of this month. Um, I'm going to be there uh, so after our con uh, on the 25th, uh, that evening I'm going to be in Wakefield and then there's going to be a kind of literary brunch thing the next morning on the 26th. Um, I will probably post more about that on my blog, which is amalenokhbab.com. Uh, and
and uh, you can sign up for my newsletter there too if you want to know about any further movements or developments writing wise um and mostly though mostly i'm just gonna you can see me here next week no not not nope. till uh arvcon so not till arvcon. Oh, right no, you're right okay never mind i had the 15th in my mind but that was the alternate for today that was the alternate for today yeah so, yeah next arvcon uh, beyond which I'm mostly in Ottawa working on my dissertation. So, yeah. That is the case. Um, and yeah, and I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, wish you have, having been through that process myself, I, uh, wish you the best of luck and, uh, it will, it will get finished. <laughs> it will over time. This too shall pass. So Inshallah. yes, yes, the time will happen. Um, but thanks Amal as always pleasure. And, uh, you know, I hope you found it uh, suitably creepy, <laughs> oh, man, it um, was so great. to speak. It was super, super great. I also can't just say I, I had a moment of going, oh, is this a dream? But no, it's, and then it was totally a dream. You absolutely did like the dream fake out to me. I am, I am impressed and. Well, sort of a fake out, but. <laughs> true, true, sort of a fake out. We don't know how much of a fake out it was, but. Exactly. That's why, you know, I figured the, the, once you had the mud, you're like, wait, is it a fake out or isn't it? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Be better than the magical than... realist fake out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to seeing uh, you sort of explore a little bit more with that over the next uh, several sessions. Um, nice thank you, time. Amal. As always, moving right on up the line, we have Terry. Uh, great stuff today, Terry. Uh, as always, and Inga got to um, have uh, get in touch with her inner uh, child slash chicken. Um, and also <laughs> chat with people. No, she's um, just used to living with kids. That's like the thing, but like long, long backstory thing. Uh, so she's just like, yeah. She kind of knows how to deal with kids, basically. And was like, yeah, okay, the box is gone and the dad is kind of an idiot. So yeah, of course the kids <laughs> the box. <laughs> was like, yeah, <laughs> not, not a hard uh, connection to make. Um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, nice that I got to play that side of her. Um, and when will the fine people, uh, where and when will the fine people see you next? Uh, well, I guess uh, at ARFCON. And after that, the weekend after that, I am going to be attending uh, the Comic Salon in Erlangen, which is the biggest German uh, comic convention, um, where you find people can see me, uh, find me at the Toon Sub booth at like every time. Um, so, yeah, uh, if anybody happens to be there, then come say hi <laughs> um yeah basically yeah that's it i think <laughs> awesome thank you terry yeah. it's a pleasure to have you back in the saddle uh for this so it's good to have you back um <laughs> Wait, what? did i miss like a session no no, no you didn't you didn't no i just meant yeah, like okay, because i was like really confused because i made sure that i didn't no no you didn't you didn't you didn't uh, I'm, I'm glad you're like back vacation. after missing when people went and killed smog again and like you know <laughs> the, the resurrected smog it was great it was you know uh -huh. it was just seems legit we did a lot anyway <laughs> So um, you just like paid your reception role. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But no, it was, a, it was good. It's uh, good to have you as always, Terry. Thank you. And uh, that I look forward to seeing more from uh, Inga coming soon. Um, moving right on up the line, we have, of course, uh, Will. Will, I know you got to get going in a second, but uh, thank you. Um, good stuff today. And uh, Robar getting some backstory uh, with Black Tom is going to have to find out some info as well. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh... Color me intrigued by uh, everything that's going on. This uh, mysterious Dunadai maybe woman who's turned up. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm interested to see where this goes and I'm uh, looking forward to uh, the next session. So uh, thank you again. That was awesome. Uh, if you want to find me, you can find me at Encounter Roleplay uh, everywhere on the internet. You can type that in and you can click on things and then my face will appear on your screen. <laughs> and it will be worth it. Uh, yeah. Your face well. has appeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all for me though. But uh, thank you. I'm uh, looking forward to next time. Good stuff, man. Um, it was definitely good, and I uh, yes, I am looking forward to that as well. It'll be uh, this is the Arfcon is going to have a lot of really good sessions for every the campaign, which I'm excited about. So that'll be good stuff. Uh, and definitely check out Will's uh, channel because he did a lot of good work uh, over Encounter Roleplay and his various podcasts and things. Moving right on up the line, last but certainly not least, uh, Trendane. Trend, you managed to get Bjorn uh, as a patron and uh, sort of chat a little bit, kind of get in in touch a little bit with the uh, inner discussions of both of them. Um, and uh, where will, I guess the question is, how are you feeling about things and where will the fine people see you next? I'm feeling, feeling pretty fine um, about it. Just would love it if I could be more stable, but apparently Comcast is looking into it. 
that's good. Yeah, it was, but it, this is exactly what happened last time. It was unstable for about an hour, and then it cleared up again. So yeah, and 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 I was talking to them on Twitter, and they're like, "Well, everything looks fine." I'm like, "Of course it looks fine. I just told you <laughs> stabilized a few minutes ago, and we're talking on Twitter." <laughs> so obviously my network connection is working now. Listen to what I said. Anyway, so they're looking. Um, but a few moments ago, uh, Amal, you 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 said uh, Inshallah, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I was like, wait, I've heard that before. <laughs> I, I know I've heard that before. And a friend of mine, Heather Alexander, years ago, you did know an Heather album. Alexander? Oh, I, I've been friends with Heather for thirty years. <laughs> I mean, Amazing. Oh yeah. Anyway, she did an album yeah. by that very title for music from the Lion's Blood, which is a book by Stephen Barnes. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, <laughs> it's like absolutely I know it. And and subsequently Alec, who will be here in six days. That album. is awesome. Oh my yep. gosh. Please convey my absolute love for his music. For, will do. Like it's will absolutely oh, do. so many years of loving that music, yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, anyway, so yeah, what? And I, oh, I was just going to say, and the idea that three people know each other, um, I have been on panels with Steve Barnes at NorwestCon, so see, everybody <laughs> everybody go. knows absolutely everybody in the world. That's that's how this all goes yep. down. Um, um, yeah, he's a smart guy. Yeah, where where you see me next? Probably on on uh, Not So Speedruns channel doing City of Mist, and then uh, uh, probably something else somewhere. And then next week on Saturday, we've got the... 12 hour thank you stream and then right. arvcon after that i keep looking over there and you're not over there you're up there. i'm up there this time yeah um yeah arvcon and you will see trend twice of course you'll see him for playing tani on friday and then on sunday you'll see him in the marathon session of infinity and beyond wrapping up the rise of tiamat which is that that's that session that campaign's gotten real no doubt serious but i mean it's closing in on the end there so yeah. two and a half years that campaign um so but um sorry it's a, it's a bit it's a bit it's been a bit um but i'm looking forward to it so wonderful work again from this party uh, you guys are awesome i uh, really love this common exploration that we have not just of you know community and game playing but also of tolkien who we all collectively love too so that was awesome and uh, i can't wait for more so chat let's get some love for the wonderful players and uh, trendane will terry and amal uh much love to all of you and i will see you in a few, couple of weeks here for arfcon okay Bye. Bye, everyone. All right. So uh, that is going to do it um, for uh, today. This was a lot of good times. I really enjoyed this. And um, it's fun to sort of see all these things come together. One of the reasons I like uh, being a dungeon master, actually, is I love being able to see these things kind of gradually make their way into fruition, you know, like gradually start to figure things out. Um, and I enjoy that a great deal uh, because, you know, I, I know sort of how things are going to go sort of, um, but then also there's other things that happen that, you know, sometimes I don't always know what the party is going to do, obviously. Um, the party goes in different directions and I kind of just have to play with that. And that's one of the great joys of it. It's what makes it organically interesting is when you're actually doing that collectively with a group. So it's always fun to sort of see that happen. Um, okay. Now, one thing I want to double check before I let everybody go is I want to remind everybody about a couple of things. First of all, if you haven't done so already, I want to remind everybody that this code right here, Twitch2018, is a special 10% off code, um, which is uh, available to coming through my channel. It is a code given to us by Cubicle 7. You will get 10% off anything you get at the Cubicle 7 web store if you use that Twitch 2018 code. So if you want to go get a copy of all of the different games that they have available, if you want to get copies of the various supplements and stuff that they have for Adventures of Middle Earth, um, if you, and of course I recommend them highly naturally, the new Warhammer game they've got coming out, the Doctor Who, the Lone Wolf, all the stuff that Cubicle 7 does, Twitch 2018 from their web store will let you do that. Um, so I recommend that and let them know that you got it from us because uh, that stuff is really, really super helpful. Um, so uh, to us, and I think hopefully you folks will enjoy it as well. Now, as far as this is concerned, the reason I put up the calendar here is I just want to double check and make sure when this nominations is happening. 
Uh, good, it's not happening this week. I didn't think so. Next week, we've got Lone Wolf Book 3, we've got Caverns of Calta, and we will have nominations for the Patreon-fueled Chat Chosen Game of the Month. So that'll be happening next week, not this week. Um, and the reason I say good, it's not this week, is because I've got to go get ready for uh, my GOG uh, stream, which is going to be uh, Pen and Pixels, and of course, Battletech, uh, which I'm going to be playing over there. Again, quick reminder about schedule. I've got GOG Battletech at 4 p.m. Eastern, so I'll be doing over there. Then I will be back on Friday. Friday for Esper Genesis, which is my sponsored science fiction campaign uh, by Alligator Alley Entertainment. The crew will be continuing that on Friday. Saturday, I will have a special during the day stream of my band, which is playing, uh, The Road is playing an acoustic set at Porch Fest um, in Somerville, Massachusetts. You can actually now see it there. If you go over and do a search for Porch Fest and do a search for The Road, you'll actually see a link to us there and you'll be able to check us out. Please stop by if you're in the Somerville, Massachusetts area, but if not, I'm also going to try to stream it. So please stop by at 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. I guess that's Saturday the 13th, I believe. No, Saturday the 12th. Um, and uh, you will see, um, you'll be able to see, hopefully, assuming all the stream goes well, you'll be able to hear uh, see End Heroes playing. So that would be lovely. Uh, and then I will be back again, as I said, next Tuesday with Caverns of Calta. And then I'll be over at Pen and Pixels playing D&D with GOG. Remember, Friday and Saturday of next week, I do not have streams because I'm going to be um, with my wife and daughter and son up at my wife college reunion it's her 20th college reunion so i'm going to be up there hanging out with them um but then of course the week after that is arvcon and that's the biggest thing that we've got coming this month arvcon has got a lot of big stuff happening a bunch of role-playing events special events concerts giveaways the whole nine yards so we've got a bunch of stuff happening and again it will all be to uh support um the damon Runyon cancer research foundation so hopefully um you folks can mark your calendars and make that happen but for right now i'm going to head over and uh, get ready to stream in about 45 minutes Again, I hope you like what you saw and heard, and if so, that you will do all the things to support the channel. Follow the channel. Check out the uh, YouTube with exclamation point ArvTube. Check out the Discord with exclamation point ArvCord. Check out the Twitter with exclamation point ArvTweets. Check out the shop where you can get Infinity and Beyond merchandise and soon-to-be uh, Adventures in Middle-Earth and... Um, uh, Esper Genesis merchandise. You can do that with an exclamation point Arv shop. And also you can of course get uh, the Patreon exclamation point Arv Treon. We'll make that happen. Uh, and that's the sort of financial backbone of the channel. And last but certainly not least of course is that sub button right above the sub window here. The sub button um, which will allow you to sub to the channel as a couple of people have done today. Thank you for the subs and resubs. That kind of thing makes a big difference and really helps the channel. And you get to use those awesome hypes that you see there from uh, Genly. Last note is that um, I have finished the character background for Shara, um, and I'm going to read that to her as soon as she's back on. Um, but I also will be doing Genli's character background next, so hopefully in the next couple of days, Genli, I will have that ready for you. But that's going to do it for me. I want to thank everyone who made this an awesome stream today. Thank you to my wonderful mods. Thank you to Dragon Spear. Thank you to my subs, Dragon Spear, Genli, and Nonstop. Also to Terry Tunes, who of course uh, resubbed up today. Thank you to Andamond, Axeman, Brahms, Ecag, Electrical Skateboard, Jagtris, Laugh Love Lindy. Hello, Laugh Love Lindy. Thank you to uh, Neopon. Thank you to Questionable Results. Thank you to Sky Redone, uh, Sky Credone, I believe. Thank you to Slow Cool. Thank you to Trendane. Good work today, Trend. Thank you to you, Christensen. Thank you to Uncle Elias. You are lurking. I know. I'm sorry. I'm calling you out of your lurk for just a minute. Thank you all so much for being here. You are all the best. And um, you're the best viewers on Twitch, as I've said many times. I'll see you in about 45 minutes at the top of the hour, 4 p.m. Eastern, for uh, some awesome fun times with Battletech. Until then, thank you, everybody, and everyone be good to each other. And I will see all of you wonderful folks in just about 45 minutes over at GOG. Until then, thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.